now time for Ermani and Edwards with Maz, live on the Woodward Sports Network. Every day, 2 to 4 p.m. Starring Ryan Ermani, Michigan great and former NFL baller Braylon Edwards, and of course, Tom Mazaway. Let's talk some sports. Let's go Wednesday show, March 13th, 2024. Armani and Edwards with Mass Woodward Sports Network, woodwardsports.com, fox2detroit.com, and the Fox Local app if you are watching live, if you're watching on YouTube. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, everybody's good out there on this picture perfect spring it day, Braylon Edwards. Good afternoon to you, my friend. What's up, man? I apologize if I'm leaning down a little bit, man. My back's a little heavy from carrying the show. Trying to stretch my back. What's up, man? I you, missed baby, you, man. man. I'm telling you. Don't do that to me, no, man. He's too man. good, too long. Dude, I had that vid. I had that vid. Had the COVID. The COVID flu. I'm glad you got the shots for that. Now, so 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 to walk us through, how did it feel? Like, you know, I've never had COVID. Is this well, different strain? Is it different? Look, I knew something was wrong with me for a month. Like, you just know your body. For okay. for a month, I was sick. Like, I just wasn't myself. I knew I wasn't myself. Um, so I went to the urgent care uh, in January because I was sick. And they test you for, you know, flu, COVID, strep, yeah. negative, negative, negative. They give you the steroid pack. They give you the Z pack. You're good to go. Yeah. You take that. Z-pack you feel good for a little infinite. while. Then it wears off you. <laughs> I'm sick again. Mid-February. I'm just not feeling good. Go back to the urgent care. Uh, COVID test, flu, strep, negative, negative, negative. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, what do they do? Here's another prednisone pack. Here's another Z pack. You take it. You take. Okay, you feel good. Wears off. Finally, I'm like, Doc. I called my doctor. I'm like, I am not. I know my body. Yeah, I'm not taking I'm another. Not good. N- another, um, another cocktail. So I. She sent me for my labs. Eight vials of blood. And um, eight vials, eight vials, and I think the most they could take from you at one time is fifteen or sixteen. Wow! So that's, you're over halfway yeah, there, right? Jeez. I was over halfway there. I don't think I have that much, right? Well, that's funny. When I went, when I went to get my blood drawn, you might the, not, uh, when I went to get my blood drawn, the, the tech was like, "I promise you, I'm going to leave you some blood." <laughs> that's real. Like so, eight yeah. vials is a lot. So had to be woozy. I went, and then you know my levels are whatever, and then the, it comes to um, I, this. SARS CoV two situation, and whatever metric it's, you know, measured by. Whatever you're supposed to be. Whatever at, you're you supposed are to be. At, you're supposed to be like less than fifty AUMLs. Less than fifty. Mine was over twenty five thousand. Whoa! So holy she's shit! She's like, you've had this virus for a long time. So yeah. So she just said, stay in bed for five days. So I did. And, uh, and that was it. That you. was it. I no medicine, just rest and stay good. And now I did full disclosure yesterday, uh, knowing that I was planning on coming back to work today. Everybody's talking about all this hydration and these IVs yeah. and everything. You know, it started people, you know, get hung over yeah, and they do like it started as like this hangover cure. My um, friend started doing one of these on the beach when I lived in Miami, yeah. like back in like '07. Yeah, and so like we go out, we have like a weekend bender. We just use these on Monday, and we'd be right back to working right. out 100. But he's yeah, an old yeah, school. Yeah. So, uh-huh. um, so it started out as this hangover thing. Well, like I asked a bunch of people about. It. They're like, dude, you've got to get the IV, the hyd- hydration, whatever. Yeah. So I got a bag yesterday filled of vitamins that come to your house, and. Um, here I am today. I haven't felt better. I haven't felt this good in over a month. Awesome. I'm happy yeah. for you, brother. So good it's good. You. Thanks for locking the show down. Uh, did anything happen when I was gone? What? Just a couple things. <laughs> Free agency has been nuts. I mean, it's still going today. So, but I, you, you can talk about it. I mean, I'm just a passenger. Hey, four again. o'clock today yeah. is the official start signing, guys, and you have to have your salary cap in order. Right. So a team like the Chargers are like in the negative big time. Mm. They've got a bunch of players that are coming due. You're either going to pay them or you're going to let them go for cheap. And one of them's Khalil Mack. Another one is uh, Bosa. 
Joey Bosa. You know, this whole thing is interesting, Bray. They have the right Bosa, brother? You do, Joey. You know, all of these names that people are talking about, I would be shocked at this point. I would be knocked off my chair if Brad Holmes went and got one of these big name free agents. If you don't understand that this isn't what he does by now, I'm not sure... I'm not sure what it's going to take for all of us to start backing away from, oh, this guy's out there, that guy's out there, this guy's out there, that guy's out there. It's not how he operates, Bray. He's got a plan, and that's the way he goes about his business. And, oh, by the way, it has worked out so far. To be honest, exactly what we talked about yesterday. I I literally had a State of the Union address, Ryan. I said those exact words. I said, look. We got to realize that he has built it his way, three thirteen and one, and nine mm-hmm. and eight to nine and eight to ultimately twelve and five in an NFC Championship. So the way he built it, it works. The guys that he's going to splash the pond with, Ryan, the guys that he's going to throw money at, those are going to be guys that they drafted. Mm-hmm. Those are going to be homegrown guys. It's going to be Amon Ross St. Brown. It's going to be Aiden Hutchinson in another year. It's going to be maybe Panay Sewell this offseason. Absolutely, season. those are the people that are getting paid here. And if you don't like it, remember what this team was three years ago, and now see what this team is now. The only player that I like in terms of spending money, just a little bit, Ryan, indulge me. They're going to let Khalil Mack go, regardless of the 17.5 sacks last year. They're going to let him go. He's older. This will be the second time he was either moved or let go in the last three years. First time was from Chicago to uh, Los Angeles. Khalil Mack's a guy that I love. Khalil Mack is a guy that still gets it. He's a hardworking guy. If you're going to pay, excuse me, if you're going to play uh, Carlton Davis, if you're going to pay him 14 5 I can see Khalil Mack getting paid 15 and you still have money keeping your books. Other than that, I agree with you. He's not spending money. He's showing you that year after year. But here's the thing, and I said this yesterday. I have my own State of the Union. God bless you, by the way. <laughs> my State of the Union is I do believe last year you were a player away. I still believe this yeah. year you are a player away. We already know he could draft. He's a great drafter. There's not many free agent guys here that make a huge difference. Alex Anzalone, yes, he did a nice job. He's one of the best leaders on the team. So they went out and got him, but they had known him from the New Orleans days. So if these guys don't know you, they pay you no mind. They put you on the pay no mind list. But guys are signing. Like, Daniil Hunter signed for $30 million, just under $30, $25, 28000000 million with Houston. I don't, I don't care if you don't know that guy. You know what he can do. So there are guys out there that you know what they can do. And if you had brought him in, it's going to help your team. Because one, is, one bad apple ain't going to spoil the whole tree. And if these guys aren't bad apples, man. They're solid citizens. But it turns out if they don't know you, you're not coming here. So we have to wait around, and they sign these guys on show-me contracts Injured guys. DJ Reader is in today, taking his physical. Good player. Another injury-prone player, if I'm not mistaken. It, that's all they sign are injury, injured players. They draft injured players, and they sign injured players. Yes, we went to the championship game last year. Yes. But wouldn't it have been nice to have a bookend to go on that defensive line or a guy – like Sneed in the backfield. Someone's going to get Sneed for a third-round pick. And you know what we're going to say? Gee, damn it. We're going to say, damn it. What, are you kidding that he went somewhere for a third-round pick? I don't care if they, who they signed so far. There is still a lot of talent out there that can help this team. And you're not have to, you don't have to break the bank. Look at these teams, how they circumvent the freaking salary cap. It's a joke. That's all I'm saying. I'm not happy as far as who we signed. I'm not. Maz, I, I think the issue is this is an old fan adage. I think if we're going to be the, the new Lions, if they're going to be the brand new Lions and we have to be the brand new Lions fans, we can't complain about what we used to do, which is what we used to complain the Lions did. Go out and get big money people and then it not work out. You finally have a system in play between Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell where they have built the system. In three years, you've seen change. Each year, substantial change to the fact where we got to the NFC Championship. You say if we had one more player, and yes, that is true, especially if it was a defensive lineman. I get that. But couldn't you argue, couldn't you argue we were two blown calls away from going to the championship regardless of the players that they had on that team? 
regardless of that defensive line not being that good, regardless of being that the DBs in the secondary gave up all those uh, yards on offense, still you were right there, and you blew it at the offensive corner position, and you blew it at the head coach position with that same defensive line. I think we got to give Brad Holmes and the Lions until it doesn't work. Like, until it doesn't work, right here, right now, we've gone up every year, including the NFC Championship last year, which they could have won. They blew that. That's on them. Until that falters, until this year they win the division but lose in the first round or they don't win the division or they don't get to the NFC Championship, then I think we can have, like, the real conversations about what we think he's doing wrong. Because as of right now, the hurt players seem to be working. As of right now, not spending money seems to be working. And as of right now, he's definitely drafting the right players. So it's tough for me to argue against what I'm seeing working. The let me, other teams have gotten better, though. Let, let me help guess, everybody think, out here. You, you beat up some bad teams last year. Those teams are improving now. So, okay. you know, CJ's not here anymore. You got a couple other guys. I know the safety position. It's pretty solid here in Detroit. CJ, I, I get it. We might have dodged the bullet with that. Let me let me let me help let me help you real quick, Maz. Um, because I have some thoughts. First and foremost, DJ Reader played 14 games last year, 14 of 17. That's good. I feel like that's a really good number. Yeah, that's good. And that should be. I mean, I, Moving forward here, when it comes to guys playing, you know, whether it's 17 games or 18 games, I think that is going to be very few and far between. Yeah, I think any anything above 14 games a year 14, yeah. is going to be like this benchmark for, you know, stability. Can a guy play? Consistent. Can I count on this guy or not? That's first and foremost. I do believe the Lions are one player away, and they're DJ Reader away, in my opinion. Everybody else after that is depth, competition. That's how I would see that. Any single person, and the Khalil Max of the world, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe that's a guy. I don't know, but it's maybe a it's a guy. It's a linebacker. But what I'm saying is, you know, and we, were, we, we had this discussion last week about um, if you could have one guy, who would it be, Legereus Need or um, Chris, Chris Jones. Jones? And I said at the time, I would rather have Chris Jones because I think – Whoever you have up front on that defensive line really impacts every level of your defense. It, it absolutely does. And I think the Kansas City Chiefs see it that way as well. And that's why they put such a strong commitment into re-signing him over a guy that's younger than him and maybe even a top five guy at that position in the NFL, Legereus Sneed. Um, so that much is true. And I do think... DJ Reader is an important player on the free agent market. He's in Detroit, according to reports, or will be in Detroit, um, depending upon uh, your source there. And um, I think this is a player, if he's here, that means the Lions want him. And I think if you look at what he does well, it, it's a slam dunk home run for what the Detroit have, Lions. One sack? Um, it, one slap, but more importantly, he's a run stuffer. Okay, he, he'll eat up two guys and let everybody else uh, make the tackles. You it, cannot look at the statistics when it comes to a player like this because he consumes so much of that offensive game plan uh, to block. I knew that was going to be part of the conversation. He only had one sack last year, but he also played four games less than what he's usually playing. But yet, and still, he had around the same amount of tackles. He had even more uh, QB hits. He had more QB hits. Then he usually does, and he played four less games. Hey, look, I, I'd like to have him here. I'm just saying. I'm like, just saying he's just not my dream guy. I understand, but he is a defensive interior lineman, yeah. which we've been begging for. Like, when everybody wanted just a defensive end, I actually wanted the defensive interior to help Aiden Hutchinson out. Look at the guy that played outside of DJ Reader last year. Oh, his name is uh, Tommy Henderson. He, oh, he's the guy that has 16, 17 sacks last two years in a row. They let DJ Reader go because they can't pay him because they're going to have to pay Hendrickson because of how good he is. But he's allowed to be that good because DJ Reader on the outside. So I definitely think it's a good pick. I think Amika Robertson is a good pickup. The DB out of the Raiders that's going to be here now. I saw what he did against Rashi Rice, and both times they played him last year, covered him pretty good. He even jacked him up one time and told him he was too small. That's the type of energy they need here in Detroit. And then obviously we talked about Carlton Davis. So, and, and once again, until Brad Holmes falters, until the Lions take a step backwards, I got to trust the process. Let me say something about Brad Holmes, too. And, and again, I, I, I don't think his free agency has been 
like some crazy no, slam yeah, dunk home run over the course of his time here in Detroit. His drafts have been, but his drafting injured. I mean, picking up injured players that have gotten injured, I think, is his biggest Achilles heel right. right now. You know, obviously, the signing of um, David Montgomery was a great signing. That was probably his. You know the the stamp that he's put yeah. really in the free agent I period. I thought CJ signing. was, and then he got hurt. Well, yeah, but he got hurt, so yeah. you really don't know about that, right? Well, I, I, mean, think, that, I think I do know. Well, I think if he's sticking around and wasn't perhaps. hurt, what I'm saying is, Maz, what you are saying, and I think what other Lions fans are saying when it comes to Brad Holmes and this free agency thing, I think this is a conversa- This is a next year conversation. I think that is not a this year conversation, and by that I mean. This guy has done things as a general manager of the Detroit Lions that we have never seen before. We've never seen this before in our lifetimes, most of us. And I think he has deserved the latitude to sign guys that he wants, and you see how it goes for a year. Now, if this doesn't work out, and they fall back, they don't win the division, they don't get a home game, maybe they make the playoffs and lose in a wild card situation, you want to hammer Brad Holmes, fine. But that's a that's a next year conversation. I think he has earned the right to sign whoever he wants to sign, fit it within the parameters of the salary cap that he sees, and you go from there. For all we know, Carlton Davis and Amik Robertson could be have two great years next year for the Detroit Lions. And why? Why could they have great years? Because this team's scheme fits exactly to a T yeah. what these two players do well. Exactly. And unlike, or just like I should say, what we see in the NFL draft, and what are we breaking down with these quarterbacks? Oh, if this quarterback goes here to this coach, he's going to succeed. If this quarterback doesn't go to this coach, he's going to fail. This wide receiver goes to a court. Where you go in the NFL draft matters way more Amen. than when you go. Amen. And I think that is for, like, free agency as well. Maybe Amik Robertson wasn't this DB1 under the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. But you know what? What he does well suits Aaron Glenn's defense so well that he'll come here and he'll have a career year. Man. Or, or or maybe Carlton Davis. Yeah, we know he got blown up by, <laughs> by Craig Reynolds. Uh, right? it, it I mean, that's what it, we know about happens. Carlton Davis. It happens in the NFL. It but what we, all, one. what we also know is, you know, Jamar Chase said that he was yeah. uh, the he, most difficult defensive back he's ever played. And, and, and what I'm saying is don't worry about the name. Worry about what they do well. And does what they do well – fit the scheme in which they're coming to and I think it's a slam dunk I think what Brad Holmes has done has been tremendous and I am not in line with people who are freaking out oh my gosh you didn't trade for Legereus oh my god you didn't sign this guy or that guy oh Bose is out there now Mike Williams is out there we need another receiver why don't you go go, go get Mike Williams we'll need him no. they probably will because he don't stay on the field no <laughs> I, I Not mean, for twenty million dollars a year. At some point, it's you good, do though. have to be a little reasonable about this stuff. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now you it, you hit the nail on the head talking about it. it's not you know when you go it's where you go, man. Because I remember. Vincent Jackson and I were arguing. This is when he got drafted. You remember uh, the wide receiver match for the Chargers? Of course. Vincent Jackson had a pretty good year, pretty good career. Excuse me. We were arguing at the rookie uh, symposium. Yeah, but it's the rookie. It's the rookie card show. It's basically when we go out there. And that's when we take all the card pictures, the rookie cards, those weird uniforms, those weird poses. They do it at the uh, at USC, at the Coliseum. Right. So it's fun, it's cool. But I'm arguing with him that I'm a much better receiver than him. That's why I went third, and that's why he went third round. I said, but you got Phillip Rivers. I said, you about to come in cooking with Grease. Meanwhile, I don't even know who the hell my quarterback is. Yeah. So we're arguing over back and forth. I saw We played against them in 2008. It was after my fourth year. He was, he was right. He said, I can't keep up with them bum-ass quarterbacks. He's been playing with me while <laughs> Phillips are in a Pro Bowl every freaking year. Yeah. It's all about That's where funny. you go. It's a real story. But, he had, yeah, we'll talk about it off air, man. Hope he's getting the help he needs. Yeah, amen to yeah. that. But, again, you know, in, in a lot of these guys, and, and look, if, if somebody tells you what they want, yeah, believe them. 
We're hearing stuff that, you know, uh, Amik Robertson is one of the greatest teammates, one of the greatest locker room guys that you could have in the NFL. I think, man, we got to, like, lean into. I'm the, not disparaging those guys. No, 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 100%. I know, I know exactly what you're saying, and to a certain extent, I agree with you. You know, you get a defensive lineman last year, we wouldn't have to worry about Dan Cable making those two calls or those two plays because they would have been much better on defense. I 100%. Or you get a kicker. You know what? The Eagles signed their kicker for $24 million today. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I, I want one of them guys. Right. I, th- I think that is an area that they will that they will seriously address because I know they know that that area has bothered them for the better part of three years. But just getting back to the players that they're picking, they're choosing players that fit their system well, and they're doing a darn good job of At least they have been for three years, man. So I think – you know, putting these players that we may want in these spaces, maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe it's not how it works. Look how they're drafting. They're not drafting the guy that you think. They're drafting the guy that they know is going to fit this system. Sam Laporta fit this system better than any tight end that we could have drafted. Mm-hmm. Jameer Gibbs, insert him. David Montgomery, picking him up for Chicago. He was definitely thunder to Jameer Gibbs' lightning. Now Jameer Gibbs is going to be the starter. But I think if you trust how they're drafting, we don't know how those situations could have happened last year because Emmanuel Mosley could have been the guy. If he didn't tear his ACL, you see they double down on him again. So I think we got to trust it. Annoying as it is, you got to sit there and trust it. I'm breaking, the trust guy. I have breaking news from Matt Broder. I already voted. And <laughs> did does he know? I'm pretty sure he might. I um, don't. So uh, the finalists are out for the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. And Braylon Edwards is on the list. <laughs> oh, look at that. So Braylon oh, yeah. Edwards. I did not know. So uh, Braylon Edwards is up for Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. And the vote goes like this. You can vote from zero to ten on how much you think he belongs in. I gave him a ten, obviously. Oh but that's God. what that if you want to get Braylon in when you go to this ballot that Ryan's gonna tell you about, Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. I think it's MS. HOF yep. dot com. Yep, we'll tweet it out. Yep, we'll tweet that out. Go on there and Throw up a ten. For well, this, is it for this one man. or ten? A do, ten. Do you want you want the ten? You want the okay. ten. So Braylon is an amateur finalist for his um, star-studded career at the University of Michigan. What? Morton That's... Anderson, Derek Coleman, Art Pinky, Darris, Braylon Edwards, Morton Johnny Anderson. Green, Drew Henson, Mark Ingram, Jake Long, Deanna Nolan, Sean Respert, yeah. and Ron Simpkins. You vote on every so single on player the there. List. Yeah, but you vote. You, you vote. rank one to ten. Right. right. Mm. You vote. You know, you can make every, you can make everyone a ten if you want, or you can make everyone a one. I, Deanna Nolan's my homie. DC's my homie. I'll Drew be... Henson's my homie. Sean Respert is a... <laughs> like Drew Henson. I gave him a seven. Deanna Nolan, I gave her a seven. You know, you could. It depends on, on and it gives you a synopsis of their biography. Well, that Gus team. Johnson, is, Gus is Johnson, I gave him a nine. Right. Is that Matt Bro? Is that his on his uh, his ex? Here, uh, I'll send it to you right yeah, now, Braylon. That it, is incredible. It's up for public voting now. Yeah. Oh wow. They allow the public to vote. That is great. All the right, media we'll votes and the public Congratulations, votes. Congratulations, Braylon. I, I just sent that, that to you. We'll get that up in just uh, just a little bit. I will absolutely send that to you, uh, Pete Spivak. Um, Braylon, very cool, and you should absolutely – I'm surprised you're not in it already, to be honest with you, if I'm being totally honest. But uh, we'll see if we can't get you in now, buddy. Appreciate that, my guy. Look at it. Things go well, man. You save somebody's life. Ain't that crazy? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, full disclosure. I'm joking. This This is is way done before before that. I'm just talking stuff. I know. I know. I just just don't want you to think uh, that's why you're uh, on here. Um, Let me get back to the lines now. By the way, Dan Miller uh, is coming up at the top of hour number two, so in about 35 minutes from now. We just one thing back to my original point about how Amik Robertson is is one of the best locker room guys um, in the NFL. So many people love him. You saw what Max Crosby wrote about him on X, and uh, it was really great. Uh, the Raiders players to a man. I watched a lot of his his plays yeah. o- over the last twenty four yeah. hours. Yeah. He looks like a he's a, he's a dog. Yeah, he's a little guy. One hundred percent. And if you football, disparage him, football he, guy. Yeah, if you disparage him. And even, it makes him even go more. Yeah, football I, guy. I, I'm already in love with him. And I think one of the things that I was trying to say was, you know, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell specifically, m- weeks ago, uh, when he was at the, uh, it was at the NFL Combine when he spoke at the Combine, talked about the player that they want. 
And even at the end of season press conference that Dan Campbell had about me guys and bringing guys in here that fit the system. And I don't care how talented a player is. If they don't fit in the room, they're not a fit here in Detroit. He said something along those lines. Correct. So I thought it was interesting that, you know, you go out and you get a guy like uh, Amik Robertson, and then hours later you see that C.J. Gardner-Johnson has signed a three-year, $33 million deal to go back to Philadelphia. They did not prioritize him, it feels like to me, in free agency. And and, and that's a um, – that's a – Cam Sutton deal, by the way. Three years, $33 million. That's exactly what Cam Sutton got. Yeah. So you won't be able to convince me that the Lions, if they wanted to prioritize CJGJ, that they couldn't have gotten something done. They simply didn't prioritize him, and they let him walk, essentially. Um, he loved it here. I, I he did. loved it here. We had Matt Broder on yesterday. Matt mm. covered him mm. last year. This guy, is he was loved in the locker room. He was loved by the fans. Sure, he had a bad NFC Championship game. Sure, he was waving goodbye to the San Francisco fans in the first half. Sure, that's what guys like him do. He is out there. He is an in-your-face guy. He's a young man. He loved it here, and I loved having him here. Look. You didn't see the best of CJ DJ. You didn't see the best of him because he blew out his pectoral muscle in the game two Came back, you know, in, in eight, game 18 yeah. and tried to play. And he wasn't, his, he wasn't his best. I just, I really liked him and I'm sad he's gone. Maz, you lobby very hard for everybody that they let go. Meanwhile, it seems like the guys that they're letting go are making it happen. They let go of DeAndre Swift last year. Don't you think that backfield was better? So they made the right move. We were complaining over Jamal Williams. How could you let Jamal Williams go? He's the heart of the team. You're he right. cried before the season. How many touchdowns did he have last year? One. Oh, he had one. The, uh, he had yeah, one touchdown. End. We keep making On a the, kneel down. On a kneel down in which he should have took the knee, but he took the touchdown because he's that type of guy. They saw that ahead of time. What if this, they saw what CJ GJ was not? They saw that. Oh, you know what? There's a reason why that secondary looked so bad in the playoffs two years ago, especially in the Super Bowl. Oh, there's a reason why he's come over here and opened that mouth. Meanwhile, the play did not back up the mouth, and maybe they saw enough. He got injured, opened his mouth, didn't back up his mouth when he opened it up. Look, he's a great player at times, but I think they saw enough. And once again, if they decided not to prioritize that guy who we thought could be the heart of the team and he gets the defense going, he yeah. gets the offense going, if they saw something else, you know what? Maybe we dodged another bullet because it seems like he went right back to the Philadelphia Eagles because maybe nobody else wanted him to the tune of the money that he thought he deserved. I got to say we might have dodged a bullet. Well, I can't argue with you. Yeah. Well, I can't argue with you on that note. I can't. Defense Last year defense. when they signed David Montgomery, I was, I was hesitant. But I didn't want, to, I didn't want DeAndre Swift here. No. I only wanted him to not go to Philadelphia. I wanted him True. to stay here. People tell me I wanted DeAndre Swift. No, I didn't. I just wanted him here as a, in case we needed him. Because instead of getting that fourth round pick in 2028, I'm like, hold the guy in case you got to play against him. It never came to fruition. And he made his money anyway. He had a great true. first half of the year last year. He faded at the end of the year. He, that's what he does. And now he's going to Chicago. He'll probably do the same thing. I'm not a big fan of DeAndre Swift. I just didn't want us to give him away to a team like Philadelphia. That's all. Maz, you know what? I got to back off because you're absolutely right. Your big thing was you couldn't see why the Detroit Lions would give a rival and somebody they're going to have to all see right. down the line. DeAndre Swift for pennies on the dollar. You know what? I take a step back. You're absolutely correct. And I and, love David Montgomery, yeah, and I was wrong that. about yeah. that. And just the thing, you know, we all agree that it's good for a team to have a dog, right? We always yeah. talk about, oh, you got to have a nasty guy. You got to have a dog out there. Aren't there different types of dogs? Kirby Joseph really? is a dog. When, when, when it comes to that stuff, so Kirby Joseph is a dog. By all uh, Brian accounts, Brian Branch is a dog. Brian Branch is a dog. Uh, Amik Robertson is, is a dog. Yeah. That's all we. So, I mean, there's many different levels. You don't have to just uh, yap, 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 True. yap, yap, and then, you know, get out there and get cooked every day. You know, <laughs> you know what man, I mean? What? Like so, ramen noodles. I mean, come on, Quick man. Quick cook. So uh, I understand it. All right, guys, Dan Miller coming up 33 minutes from now. More NFL news uh, coming up next. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, but first, a message from... 
Piper, baby. Pete Spivin. That's right, baby. It is Wake Up Woodward. Woodward Sports has a new morning show. Start your day with Wake Up Woodward Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. live on Woodward Sports. Join Kool-Aid, Flannel Sam, Broder, JB, and KG every morning as they cover all of Detroit sports talk, banter, and live fan interaction all on Detroit's number one sports network, and that would be Woodward Sports. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. At work and at home, we're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Woodward Sports. They write down these long, long, long reads. I don't need all these reads. Four things you need to know. Judgment free zone. You come to plan and finish, you won't be judged. You can work at your own pace. Take your time. Do what you want to do. You won't be judged. Also, you want to work out somewhere clean. This clean is this gym is squeaky clean. Squeaky clean RP. Yo, and at the end of the day, man, you're fitting. It should matter. It should be essential. And that's what it is. A plan that's finished. It's only $10 a month. Get off your butt, get down to the gym, because spring is coming, followed by the summer. Plan of fitness. Your fitness is essential. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Woodward Sports Network. Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, Tom Mazaway. Guns up. Pete Spivak, we got Mike in the audio booth. Hell yeah. Hey, Mike. How you doing, buddy? Doing um, straight, I'm having a lot of fun here talking to Little Lions. We've got Dan Miller coming up in about 30 minutes from now. We'll get his take on Lions free agency so far. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I, so he busts my chops. Well, I mean, I, I do think you're being a little fanny. So? And less analytically. Since, since when do you guys? Since when do you guys become so smart? Well, why are you guys smarter than me? I don't think anyone here is as much smarter well, than me. Well, I, I don't. I don't think Brad Holmes okay. is smarter than oh. me. Well, th then we can't have a conversation. Okay. Certain things. Th then we, if, if that's the case, we can't have a conversation. <laughs> I'm only kidding on that last one. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not. A, I'm not an NFL GM, but I, I, I can. Again, think, I can think like one. I, I know you know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that you don't know what you're talking about. What I'm saying is, I can't wait for people to text out that I just said I'm smarter than Brad. Yeah, Holmes. right. I know yeah. it's a joke. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, I've evolved. <laughs> I, in that, I just think it's it's wimpy. They they handle free agency wimpy. Yeah, they, I, they rely on their drafting ability. Let me tell you something. You're drafting these guys. You hit the jackpot so far. Are you going to keep going back to that casino? The casino is going to win. Let me ask you that. Let me ask you this. And again, I'm trying to have a conversation with you. I'm not. I'm not trying to hammer your opinion. I disagree with it. That's right. But I'm not trying to hammer you for it. Um, 
if they sign DJ Reader, who is in the building, yeah, which I think is a huge difference maker for this team. Yes, and then you have, you know, the I don't two know, corners. They got three the two corners. Three guys that you, three guys that you pluck out of the draft and can play for you in depth roles. Right. You know, you also have players on your team that will be better next year. You hope. Well, I mean, just. I don't think rookies are at their peak. You know, I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be a better player next year than he was this year. I think Sam Laporta is going to be a better player next year than he is this year. I think Jack Campbell is going to be a better player next year than he, he is be. this year. I think Brian Branch is going to be a better player next year than he is this year. I think uh, Aiden Hutchinson. <coughs> excuse me. And so forth. These young players are going to develop under this system. They're going to be better players. If you add pieces, you know, DJ Reader yeah. and, 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 and Amik Robertson, uh, Carlton Davis, you're adding these players. I think if Melifonwu is going to be a better player you next year. Marcus Davenport. Uh, Marcus Davenport, yes. if healthy, is going, going to be better. They will <laughs> add players through the draft. I just think they've afforded themselves the, the uh, ability to get better. See things that we don't see. Look. What don't you see? What don't they see in these guys that just got signed? Spend, what don't you see in these guys besides money? I think they don't agree with spending money frivolously if they don't believe, if they think they can get a cumulative number. At the end of the day, this is what it's about. How many times have you seen these major deals pay off? Let's start there. How many times? But that's old times. No, it's man. not what about, old times. How, how what about Vaughn Miller two years ago Khalil to the Mack Buffalo Bills? What in about LA? Khalil Mills? I mean, Khalil Mack to the LA Chargers. What about Vaughn Miller and Buffalo? How'd what about that work out? Bradley Chubb down there with the Dolphins? That Dolphins defense, it was very vaunting last year. No, it was trash. I know. You're watching these major moves that people are losing this money because they come from one spot in which they've been ingrained for four years. Then they go to another spot where now they got paid, now they got the bag, and they're losing interest. They want to make sure the guys that they bring in want to be here. That the guys that they make sure are still hungry and also that they're paying their guys. Who's the biggest time a, wide receiver a couple of years ago? Christian Kirk got $20 million a year, million. $24 million a year. How's that worked out? They overpaid what, him. For Jacksonville. What, what, what I'm also, saying is I, just look at what they're doing right now, man. I got you, Bray. We have complained and complained about what position, I mean, what side of the ball? Defense. And then we complain specifically about two levels of defense. Complain about the defensive line and we complain about the defensive backs. You look at this, they signed Carlton Davis, Amik Roberts, they signed Marcus Davenport, and oh, by the way, DJ Reader's in the building. They've gotten two players on each position we said was trash. I think they know what they're doing in this particular. Those big money players don't necessarily plan out. Okay. Daniil Hunter, he signs with the Texans. Oh, shoot, he's on the other side of mm. Will Johnson Jr. Ooh, mm. Ouch. Yeah, I guess he'd probably help. He might work well, out. Well, <laughs> and again. That's nasty. He might work out. That's I, nasty. I, I, I what if he was on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson? You'd say the same thing. I would also say they lost a lot of money in paying him. Like, now it has to work. I mean, I do, Why wouldn't it? I do appreciate the pushback because I, I don't mm -hmm. think it's interesting I think to. It regardless, yeah. I don't think it's interesting to just be like, oh, well, Brad Holmes like these guys. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's interesting either. And I'm, I, yeah. I hope that's not how I'm coming across. What I am saying is, I'm not willing to sit here and freak out over something that I really don't know how it's going to play out. I've also been wrong. Well, yes, we've all been wrong, but I think, again, I just keep going back to these guys have such a defined plan. When that plan stops, when the progress of that plan stops, I think at that point, then I'll move over to you, Maz. At that point, then I'll say, you know what? What you're doing now isn't working, and this is what they should be doing. But until that day comes, I, I think I'm uh, more inclined to give these guys the benefit I'm of the doubt. I'm a happy Detroit Lions fan. Yeah. yeah, I'm proud that I'm a Detroit Lions fan. I'm proud to wear my Detroit Lions gear. Mm -hmm. I'm going to love them win, lose, or draw. I'm going to keep coming back. I'm going to keep paying to go to games. I'm going to keep paying for more Lion gear. No one's got more Detroit Lions gear than me. 
I'm a fan. I got helmets. I got everything you want. Come to my house. Look at what I got up on my walls. I am an all-in Lions fan. So I'm sorry. They have never been to a Super Bowl. So I'm a little, I'm a little bit pissed that they haven't gotten there yet. But now they're as close as they've ever been before. And yes, I'm happy. And I love Dan Campbell yeah. and Brad Holmes, Chris Spielman, and the rest of the guys there. I love the team. I love the direction. I'm just saying, what's wrong with going out and getting an all-pro proven guy? Of course you got to pay him. Would you have been mad if you had Chris Jones and you had to pay him $90 million? No, you wouldn't be mad. You would have a Super Bowl. I'm just trying to think, too, like, how many guys on an NFL team do you pay? Uh, like, pay. I'm talking to, in, in not rookie quarterback guys. They're not paying anyone on okay, defense. Wait, wait a minute. Wait no a minute. one. Okay, just wait a minute. How many teams, when you pay a quarterback, and I'm not talking about San Francisco who pays their quarterback 980000 I'm talking about when you have to pay a quarterback, how many players do you pay on average? Just throw a number out that you think. If you're paying a quarterback, then you're probably paying two defensive players and another offensive player, so four total. All right. So you've got Decker, Ragnow. Both guys are getting paid. Okay. Goff is coming up. Uh, St. Brown is coming up. Aiden uh, Hutchinson is coming Aiden up. Aiden Hutchinson. Panay Sewell is coming up. Panay. Another year. Okay. Um, that means next year when they add to the cap, you'll be able to do but good. they can extend Panay this year. Realistically, this will be they his won't. fourth year. I'm t- they won't. Hey, who, who? Whenever, he, whenever he signs, he's going to break the market, and he will change the game. Why not extend him a little bit early? you got to give Decker money before him. So, again... So you've got Decker, Ragnow, Goff, St. Brown, Aiden, two more years. Yeah. Maybe you got something. I'm around St. Brown. You already put him on there. I uh, got St. Brown. Panay, you've got one more year. So. And on defense, you're paying no one. Well, this team's strength is offense. You know. I rest my case. I also look at it like this, too. Look, you talked about how long you've been a Lions fan. I haven't been a Lions fan that long. So me in my three years of being a Lions fan, what I've seen. You had a good. This is true, but I'm also telling you, like, I'm not thinking about 1990. I'm not thinking about 2000. I'm not thinking about anything past. I'm thinking about what I've seen. And what I've seen is them build it the right way. What I'm seeing is them spend money where they need to spend money, draft where they need to draft. And I've also been wrong so many times in these last three years. That's how I look at it. How many times must I be wrong before I got to say, you know what, maybe I should listen to what they're talking about. I said draft Jalen Carter. Like, I was the biggest advocate of J- Jalen Carter. Still don't think I was wrong, but I was proven wrong in terms of what Jameer Gibbs did, in terms of what Sam Laporta did. Like, I was wrong, and I can admit I was wrong. I was wrong on Jared Goff. I was wrong on how they were running. I was wrong on them Jamal, Lu- Jamal mm-hmm. Williams leaving. I said he was the heart of the team. How many times must I be wrong before I can finally say, you know what, let me just sit back and trust Brown. And, and I trust him. But go out, and, go out and break the bank once. Were you happy with Cam Sutton's big free agent signing contract last year? I didn't really know much about him. And neither, and, and maybe that's. Uh, you know what? And, you know what? And that's what he is. Back. I don't know much about him, but now right. I do. Right. Well, let me ask you. Okay. So if, if DJ Reader is in the building, um, or will be this week, and let's just say they pay him, okay? Let's just say they pay him, okay? What are they going to pay him? What can he get? 15, 20 million a year? I don't, I don't, I don't I know what no the contract is. Decker, Ragnow, Goff, St. Brown, Aiden, Panay, DJ Reader. That's seven guys. Panay is next year. Okay. Take him off. I'm not taking him off because if you sign a guy to a four year deal, that's money that's on your books for four years. Next year, the, the cap will go up again. You just told me we're talking about this year's team. Next year's well, team, I'll okay, worry go, about next year. Go sign a one year. But you, Brad Holmes can't do that. Listen, man, I don't give a damn about 2025. I don't. I want to win now. 2024, I want to win. I want to win the division. I want to go to the Super Bowl. And I want to win that damn game. What if they do? Then I'll be happy. Then you can implode the team. I don't care. <laughs> I want to win once. I want to go to the Super Bowl once. Do you believe they're on a track to yes, do that? Yes, of course they are. Then what are you all huffing and puffing for? Because there are a lot of a lot of talent just left uh, left, and Who? we don't have it. Daniil Hunter. I mean, I, I I'm just. 
I'm just, I'm asking. I'm asking. Do you want to tell the people where Daniil Hunter went? Yeah, he went to the Texans for a hometown discount. $28 million a year. 24.5. Yeah, even less. Uh, just a couple of free agent signings. That's that worked, pretty good. That worked out, but not great. Uh, Jadavion Clowney and uh, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, it worked out a little bit, but Clowney, you he, said he says it. Clowney will find you ten sacks, <laughs> but he ain't gonna be here. But they're where did they get the team? They they were like, did they win? Did Jadavion was he on the Super Bowl winner last year? I don't. I don't did know. Did he make it I to the Super Bowl? I don't care. I don't care. I just want to go. I want to go. You don't know if you can get back there again. No, it, you you don't. So who cares about Simon Penesul? I don't care. Let's go around the NFL. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Let's go around the NFL. Maz, would you like to start us off here with? Uh, yeah. Thank you. Fine. More free right. agent signings. Daniil Hunter to the Texans, two years, forty-nine million. We talked about it. This was the shocker for me. If this is true, I, I'm flabbergasted. The Giants are going to release Daniel Jones. Now, I don't love Daniel Jones, but they, he's going to be a post-June draft. He's going to be a post-June draft uh, Casualty. cut. Cup cat. They're going to lose so much freaking money. If they kept him, it would cost them less to keep him and put him on the bench. So it looks like they signed Drew Locke. So Drew Locke is now the starting quarterback of the New York somebody. Giants. Pardon? They're going to draft somebody. Of course. They're going to move up and probably go after your guy. Can I just say, can somebody, and not you guys, you guys I'm talking about, can, can somebody please give me the credit that I do believe I deserve on this J.J. McCarthy You got thing. it. I said he was going number one. I, you okay? got it. If J.J. McCarthy goes in the top three, that's a win for me. That is a win for me. What People are sitting a oh, second round. First, first overall, this guy's not even a first round pick. I'm getting hammered here. Somebody's better got, got to call nine. Braylon's over here trying to call 911 because you guys are murdering me. <laughs> He's got to report a murder. You guys are killing me. You earned, you did. really hit it on the button. I mean, you have hit it. And I don't know what the hell you saw and not in only, his years at Michigan except winning games. But not only that, I told you exactly why I thought it. Yeah. I didn't just say it. I gave you the reasoning for it, the exact reason for it. And those exact reasons are even uh, being played out right in front of our eyes. Day in and day out. Hell, Mel Kuyper has him going three now. Mel Kuyper's finally bought you know, into J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. And, and again, he said Daniel Jones is better can I than J.J. McCarthy. I get hammered for Malik Willis. Malik oh, Willis. I heard another it one was today. One bad take. Holy crap. One bad freaking take in, in, in three years of doing this. Oh. Can this, which was out there on a limb, I was out there by myself on a limb. Can this put that to rest? Can you please? Can you please give me the respect that I'm due? Ryan, man, stop asking these cornballs for respect. They, they're not going to give it to you. They're not going to give it to you. We, we, we here, analysts or whatever you want to call us, we know what you've been clamoring for the better part of two years now. And look, and, and you got it. Here we are. Mel Kuyper's even changed it. You know what they're going to do. I want to add something to that, though. I told you that Daniel Jones was a bum. I told you when they drafted him, Mass, you were in love with him. You start calling him Danny Dimes. I, said, I ain't seen a dime yet. That's Vanilla I, Vic. I seen a bunch of I seen a bunch of nickels. The Joker had, an, and this is what even makes it funnier. You guys tripled down his Giants fans. He won a he playoff that, game when he had that eighty-yard scamper. His pre his rookie preseason when which he tripped himself. Before he even got in the end zone, that should have let you know what he was going to do. But meanwhile, Danny Dimes, he wins. No, he's trash. And I'm so glad he's getting released. Stop believing in these bums, man. He's Danny Dimes is no good. And he was no good when he was selected by oh the Giants. God. I think so many people. I saw um, Duke and was out at the draft. Right. I said, he went to Duke. I'm cool. So many people said it in the draft. I'm they cool. couldn't believe it. And, and I do think this is the one thing about this version of the NFL that I do like. They're um, not doubling down. If you yes. trash, you trash. If you suck. Here. 
you're out. It's like basketball. I, I'm, I don't care if you're Russell Wilson uh, with an $80 million dead cap number. I don't care if you're Danny Dimes and we just paid you $45 million yeah. 12 months ago. If you can't play, I don't got yeah. this time. I don't have enough time for you to sit here with me. Also lets you you're, know how much money out. these owners really have mm -hmm. and also you know how much they know how to feed the market and, and, and do little things so they get the $80 million back tax-free dollars, man, because they are starting to just let go. Like, it's one thing in the NBA, but in the NFL, they're letting $80 million go. That never has happened. Mm. They found a way to cheat the system. It just goes to prove you as well that the cap is fake. Money, is fake. money is fake. Um, it's all fake. What, what did I see today? Uh, somebody restructured their contract. Who was it? Was right. Patrick yeah, Mahomes. Mahomes. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes restructures his contract to free up $21 million in cap space for the Kansas City Chiefs. It just further proves that the cap does not matter. And I do think, Tom Mazzaway, that is one of the parts of this whole thing that you get frustrated yes. with. Is That's you, why I'm not worried about two years, three years right, from now. Right, I yeah. want to win now. That's all. Yeah, I will say that part about you, like we're all so worried about the cap. Yeah. And we're like, why? Why? Because it's not my money. Um, I don't give a damn. No, I mean, you think? <laughs> well, it's and I say that about baseball, right? Because there's no salary cap. You want to pay Shohei Otani a billion? I don't right? give a damn. What do we pay care? him a billion. Right. Um, but Dodger dogs are twenty three dollars, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's inflation anyway. Yeah. Inflation is a kind they of have the highest, situation. They have the highest beer prices in uh, yeah. in all major yeah. pre baseball. I'm part. shocked. Well, you pay the California tax. It's yeah. true. You like know. a beer, like a beer there is like the same. It's like can you just walk up and steal the beers? They don't, they don't tackle you, right? <laughs> not in California. I'm gonna tell you California. like this though. Get out of that parking lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm not still in there. Like that because you be, you're in the parking lot running for for two miles before you get out. Chavez Ravine. Oh, shit. hey, this this next yeah. NFL note I'm gonna give you cracks me up, and I have LOL in front of it. One of my least favorite players got traded to the Carolina Why don't Panthers. you like this guy? Oh. Deontay Johnson's a bum. Can't. Yeah, he can catch, but he's a bum. He quits. He walks back to the but huddle. He did bum. it in the playoffs last year against the Bills. What did I say yesterday? He is a bum. And he went to the Carolina Panthers where you belong. They're the worst franchise ever. You're going after a guy like Deontay Johnson. Maz, what did I talk about yesterday? When we talked about Russell Wilson signing with the Pittsburgh Steelers, I was like, those receivers – are so horrible right now. You got, you got. Uh, excuse me. He's got Pickens though, and Pickens uh, does the same thing. Yeah, yeah, George Pickens doesn't want to block because it was no, cold outside. Correct. George Pickens didn't want to catch the ball he in won, the playoffs. He will not be on my outside. team. But guess what? Why does he do that? Who's the guy that got paid two years ago? It's supposed to be the veteran leader on the team. It's Deontay Washington. It is proof. Young guys follow the leaders. You follow the older guys. What the old guy does is what you're going to do. You see a guy that gets paid. You see a guy that's four years on top of you. Pause. You're going to emulate what he does. They're going to emulate. What happened to the Steelers organization? What happened to that franchise? They used to do things right for years and years and years. This is a joke. But to your point, Carolina is a place with Deontay Washington. Oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. I wish Pickens would go with them. They should send Robbie Anderson back to Carolina. Oh, he's Robbie so Anderson bad he can't make that team. <laughs> Pittsburgh is just a, a – No, they've improved. A, a, well, it's just – they're so, defense, yeah. They had they've Queen, improved. Patrick Queen. They win every year, and you're like, how? Yeah. How they is slap this it together. team winning? They slap it together. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. All right, I got some more for you. Please. Shaq Barrett to the Dolphins. One year, $9 million. We talked the, about him it's yesterday a, great a little bit. Dolphins are peeling back, though. Despite this signing, this is a guy probably just wants to stay in Florida. One year. You yeah. know, yeah, uh, yeah, he won't the, play for the Dolphins. Right, the, hang out on South Beach. The Dolphins, to me, are a team that's really going to take a step back here. Uh, this year in 20. You think they, so? They're, they're a team that doesn't make the playoffs next year oh, to me. Oh, I don't me. know about that. Yep. I, I think they're a team that doesn't make the playoffs in the NF, in the AFC because I, I think you've got a couple of teams that are coming up in the AFC, most notably the Chargers. I feel you. As long as they got Tyreek Hill, the wide receiver, and as long as they get that oh, running yeah. back that all mm. runs 4-2, 4-3, four, four, oh, yeah. they'll still be perfectly H fine. H-N. Yeah, one edge. That, Fair H enough. As well as Raheem Mostert. Oh, yeah. And he still has some Mr. Touchdown. On the other side. Yeah, that I, guy that scores touchdowns. I, I don't think they'll ever be in, in Super Bowl contention again. I'll give you that, Ryan. But in terms of a playoff team, they'll be a playoff team. Fair enough. Yeah. Jameis Winston, your guy. Love Jameis. Going to the Browns. He's going to back up or start over Deshaun Watson. Did you see the story that Deshaun Watson did not want Joe Flacco on the team, so they didn't even offer him a no, contract? No, I did not yeah. see that. That's, and, and I don't know if that's, uh, you know, 
if that's real or not, but the word out there was that Deshaun did not want Joe Flacco on the team, and that's why they did not sign I'll him. I'll be damned. Well, if you think come about it. Comeback player of the year. It makes well, sense. Come, come back player of the year. Like, you know roles, right? No. I mean, roles are defined in any organization. I think if Deshaun Watson had two bad games, they'd be booing for it. What yeah. are what what what's that whole sort of crowd? Uh, all the fans in Cleveland would turn on Deshaun in one second. Yeah. Can I can I tell you a Please. funny story about Cleveland? This Aren't is, they all funny? This is the, yeah. <laughs> man, you're you're hilarious. This is the year after we make the Pro Bowl. Ryan and mine. This is Derek Anderson made the Pro Bowl in 07. I made mm. the Pro Bowl. Kellen Winslow makes the Pro Bowl. Uh, in uh, 2007, he gets paid in 2008. He gets three years, 24 million dollars. He never told me and Kellen thank you, which is wild to me. But anyway, um, <laughs> don't you know he had a bad game against Dallas in the opener? He had a bad game, game two against the Steelers, and he had a bad game, game three. Don't you know they were booing him? They were booing him for mm. three games. Oh. Then, he, then he got hurt because they wanted Brady Quinn to take over. Then he got hurt. Don't you know they cheered? Because he knew Brady Quinn would have to come in. Like, the NFL is ruthless mm, yeah. when it comes to that. You're absolutely right. If you're hey, Deshaun back Watson, up quarterback, back up goalie. If you're Deshaun Watson and your mental isn't right, now you're struggling, now you know he's behind you, a guy that is a Super Bowl MVP. He also got them to the playoffs last year. He be, I'd be nervous, too. I would have I would have told them yeah, he, can't, he, he can't come back. Give me Jameis Winston. No doubt. And, Jameis, there's really no threat. You know um, who the starter is and who is not. Right when Jamo walks in the building, and I love Jamo, but he's a backup quarterback in this league. Uh, I wouldn't want him to play more than three or four games for me at any one time in a, in a season. Would um, you rather have him or Flacco? I'd rather have Flacco. Uh, um, James the re- is finding ways to win games. Yeah, and the reason I'd rather have Flacco is because what I've seen. Right. You know what well, I mean? He's, like, he's won a Super Bowl. The, he's well, he's won a Super Bowl, but even last year, he's you know. He got them to the – Help get, him, get a team to the there. playoffs. Was, was like you know what I mean? Pl- and and, and J-Mo did have that same opportunity yeah. with the New Orleans Saints. It's not like um, the team that won the NFC South won by five games. Right. It was the Tampa Bay Bucks with, uh, with, uh, with a 9-8 and eight record. So you just had to be above 500 um, to win that division. So I, I think when you see those two kind of situations – um, I think Joe Flacco did a better job. So you're asking me the question, I'd rather Flacco. Are you happy the commissioner's back, uh, John Kaminsky? Uh, what a great took what a, a little, great Took a little bit less. Well, it's, it's a guy that really knows his value and, and knows where he wants to be, right? I mean, uh, so John Kaminsky is back. And so is Dan Skipper, by the way. Oh, I love that. Both guys. You know I love that. Um, both guys have their heart is here yeah. with this Lions organization. So Dan Skipper um, and... Um, John Kaminsky both taking deals probably less than what they would get on the open market because they know the expectation here in Detroit. They know their value here in Detroit. Yeah. And um, sometimes taking a little bit less is worth it for, um, you know, just y- your 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 life. Of course. Yeah. <clears throat> it's also about it, it, at the end of the day, it's how you get treated. You know, you're talking about two guys that were trying to make it along the lines in the NFL, a bunch of different places, and it didn't necessarily work out. Here it worked out, and not only did it work out here, you were part of change, and you're part of a team right now that is vying for the Super Bowl. This is a smart decision. Yeah, I'm going to take less to stay in a position I know I'm valued. They know they're valued here. They know they're going to get on the field. They know they create a direct change, and they know the city messes with them. This is a great move for both sides involved. Mm-hmm. I'll uh, tell you, I take my hat off to a guy like Kirk Cousins. Yeah. I know he got paid, oh. but, you know, he had a good life in Minnesota. His family loved it. Where they were, and I'm not sure how many Coles are in Atlanta, but he had that Coles in Minnesota on lockdown. That Coles cash. His wife is from Atlanta, good. right? I know. Also, yeah. So it's kind of you know, I'm happy for him. He's he's still getting paid, man. They're also, Kirk Cousins. Two things. One, also, money goes a long way in Georgia versus where it goes in Minnesota. That four years, 180 million dollars he's gonna get. He's gonna live like a king out there in Georgia. But also, too, it goes to show you when you do the right thing. He has been a staple guy everywhere yes. he's been. He's been a leader, whether it was Washington, whether yep. it was in Minnesota. It's now going to be down there in uh, Atlanta. People love him. He works yep. hard, and he brings the right type of attitude, man. Look, he's one of those Michigan State guys. That's that a I great spark. I like Kirk Cousins. That's a great spark. He ain't going to win you no primetime games, but I like him. His agent should be on the top of the list <laughs> Mount, yeah. for any player coming into the NFL yeah. draft this year. 
What the agent has done for Kirk Cousins is unlike anything we've wow. ever seen. He has maxed out Everywhere. Kirk Cousins' ability to make money in the NFL more so than any player in the history of the National Football League, in my you opinion. You got a good call and there. Kirk Cousins, when it's all said and done, will have made over $350 million. Tell me that. I thought it was over four hundred or, million in contracts. Well, over four hundred. There yeah. it is. Now go look at when he came out till now. No way would you tell me that's possible, <laughs> right? No way. He is maxed out everywhere. He got he got the player max in everywhere. Washington. He everywhere. got it in I mean, RG three went number one. Then he goes in what round? Four. Four. Four to the same freaking team. Right. Wow. I mean, but and he survived all of that. Hey guys, Adam Schefter, eight-time Pro Bowl defensive end and former NFL Defensive Player of the Year, Khalil Mack, will remain with the Los Angeles Chargers this season uh, and free up salary cap space for the team by agreeing to restructure his deal. The old restructure. The old restructure. So he stays. Mike Williams out in uh, San Diego or in LA for the Chargers. Bosa still up though. Absolutely. Uh, he dude. He never plays anyway. He missed twenty games in the last two. Uh, years. I mean, seriously. He but, hasn't had like, more than he hasn't had double digit sacks in four seasons. Dude, he has he steroid uh, depreciation. Plays. Yeah, he never plays either way. His uh, brother's right, starting, his, his brother starting to do the same thing. Oh yeah. We'll catch up with uh, Dan Miller. We'll do that next. But first, a message from. Us here we'll get text, my good man. Absolutely. Good. We have a new lineup of sports wearables for you because if you're tired of wearing the same old Detroit sports merch, it's a new era in sports wearables. New designs, amazing apparel, and the ultimate swag. Check out Woodward Sports' latest gear at woodwardsports.com and click shop the hoodies, the tees, and the hats that are guaranteed to turn heads. Again, go to woodwardsports.com, click shop. Over to Bray for some Soroki. I uh, didn't get it, but don't need it. Oh, you're you talking it. about. I got it. Locations Here go, popping up everywhere. That crispy chicken with the pizza, with the salad and the sides. Soroki's chicken and pizza. They're taking over by storm. What else would you like me to say? Check out their full menu and find the closest Soroki's near you. That is S A R O K I S dot com. Soroki's and Woolworth we'll Sports, home of the crispy chicken. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Winning is a habit. So is listening daily to Woodward Sports. We're glad you're a winner, and thanks for listening. Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, ah! Tweet us, hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Hey guys, it's Maz from Premier Pet Supply. Hands down, Michigan's best pet store. Family owned and operated for over 30 years. 13 Metro Detroit locations, over 60 brands of food at the lowest prices available, curbside delivery, and they have nutritionists on call for you. Any kind of questions about your pet or their food or anything like that, Premier Pet Supply has got you. Call them right now or get in touch with them online. PremierPetSupply.com, Ryan? All right, 
right, let me tell you about Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Walk into any Lady Jane's for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists and enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's open seven days a week. You can walk in anytime. Lady Jane's is wicked awesome. All right, guys, welcome back. Hour number two, Ryan Armani, Braylon Edwards, a uh, very disgruntled Tom Mazaway, but we think we have uh, walked him off the ledge. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Dan Miller joins us, Fox 2 Sports Director. You can watch us on the Fox local app on your smart TV, Roku, Fire TV. Um, yeah, feel free to download that app. It's a great app. You can watch us two to four every day live. Dan Miller, Fox 2 Sports Director. How are you, my friend? Hey, Dan. What's up, boys? How you doing? Uh, good to see you, doing man. Doing good, looking good, feeling good. Uh, feeling good, walking tall, first day in Europe. I'm telling you, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, well, let me just start with this. Um, before we look back, let's look ahead. Guy that seems to be on the on the Lions' radar right now, DJ Reader from the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, seems like uh, he played 14 games last year. He's, he's a good run defender. This, to me, feels like a, a, a guy that the Lions absolutely need in free agency. Uh, how do you see it with DJ Reader? What kind of uh, legitimacy would you give these uh, reports that, that he's either in the building or will be in the building this week? Well, I think if he's coming in the building, that's obviously a sign of interest. B, it's also a sign, I think, that they want to get a look at him because he finished last year with an injury. And I think they want to see how significant that is, how he's coming along and what the timetable might be for him to come back. I don't know anything about that, but I think the, the physical side of it is going to be key for him. And that's probably why you did not see him come off the board early and just sign a contract with the team, as you saw a number of these guys do. Look, he is one of the better run stoppers in the league. Uh, not going to give you a ton, I don't think, in terms of pass rush, but that's OK. He plays a significant role that this team could use. Uh, they were already good against the run last year, but you can certainly be better. And I think we know that they can upgrade on what they're pairing right now with Aleem McNeil in the middle of that defensive line. And Reader would certainly be one of those guys that would do that. But don't know what the competition for him is. Don't know what the ultimate price for him would be. But I think the first thing you got to figure out is just what that, I think it was a quad tendon uh, that he had last year that you got to figure out where that thing stands. And then you look at what they have done so far. I mean, um, you know, I'm not sure that gonna, you know, anybody that they signed, you know, Amik Robertson, Carlton Davis, uh, Marcus Davenport is gonna knock you off your chair. But then you do look into these guys a little bit further, and you're like, yeah, these guys can play. Seems like Brad Holmes has a plan. Oh, I think he's definitely got a plan, yeah. and I think he's sticking to that plan, which is to find guys that they believe fits their system. And it's unfortunately for a lot of fans that want to see them spend $90 million on somebody. That's just not what they're doing. And look, I, I'm not here to tell you that you can't have that opinion or that you shouldn't want to go out. Look, would I like to have Daniel Hunter? Yeah, I'd love to have Daniel Hunter. Yeah. But that's just not how they do business. And they, that's not how they've done business since they walked in the door. And Brad Holmes pretty much told you after the season, they weren't going to be going after high dollar guys. So... You know, I don't understand some of the head banging against the wall from some people because there's just nothing to indicate that that's where they've, you know, directed their efforts in the past. But it also isn't over. There's a lot of players out there that are going to help football teams win games right now. And maybe they didn't find their market at the outset of free agency. They're going to sign with somebody, and I'm confident the Lions are going to sign a couple more guys that are going to help them. But it's also fairly clear that a significant portion of what they're banking on is improvement from within. And I think we've seen that from 313 and one to nine and eight to 12 and five in an NFC championship game. And Dan, one of the things too, um, I think you're so right about this. You, you, these guys are telegraphing exactly what they're going to do. And, you know, I thought uh, Dan Campbell, and I don't remember if it was at the um, combine or if it was in the end of year um, press conference, he was saying, he's like, look, um, we don't care how talented a guy is. If he doesn't fit the locker room, we're not going to re-sign him. And then you hear about, you know, this Amik Robertson. One of the one of the number one things you hear about him is what a great locker room guy he is. You got Max Crosby, Crosby fawning over this guy. Um, juxtapose that with CJ GJ uh, signing with the Eagles last night. Um, do you think CJ Gardner Johnson just wasn't a priority for this team? Um, do you think they would have liked to have, have had him back? What, what's your take on Gardner Johnson? 
I just think the landscape changed on Gardner Johnson here. I think when they signed him, they had no idea how good Brian Branch was going to be. Maybe they thought, you know, and obviously that would have been a signing before the draft. But look, Brian Branch came in here and, and stole a job and, and took that nickel job and nobody could get it away from him. Then I think with the way that if he played it the way at the, at the end of last year, Kirby being another safety, I mean, the possibility that you could also put Branch at safety and put Robertson at the nickel. I mean, they have options now. And I think those options kind of took away where they saw Gardner Johnson playing. And it's not a, a comment against him. It's just the landscape changed. And I don't think they felt like the kind of price tag he got in Philadelphia was going to be worth them paying here based on the guys that had emerged and the way that depth chart was coming around. Doesn't say he's not a really good football player. He is. And it was exciting when they got him last year. Obviously, I don't think it worked out for reasons nobody could foresee or control. But at the end of the day, I think right here, right now, that depth chart just looks different than it did the day that they signed him last year. And long time no speak. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Braylon, what's up, man? Ah, nothing much, man. Just talking about Hey, Dan, Detroit. by the way, Braylon is uh, just announced today on the ballot for the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. How about that? Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get that in. I had to get that in. I have, been, that I have in. been honored to uh, be involved in that thing many times as the host, and it's a great event, and it's always, you know, a great class, and you know what? It's made for guys like you and everything you've done, Braylon. Oh, man, you guys are too good, man. You made me forget my question. Now, <laughs> now, now I'm unprofessional. Give now him I'm a 10. Uh, I, I agree with you about Dan and Campbell and Brad Holmes, and I think me being a new Lions fan, you know, spanning 3, 13, and 1, 9, and 8, and then 12, and 5, and then the championship, it's got a chance to see him grow. So every time that I yelled at a Brad Holmes move, it worked out. Every time that I said, eh, I got to see it, I saw it, and I saw how they've increased in that, in, in that space. So – I won't have much to say about that. It's just the division is getting better at the same time. And I think that's what fans are talking about. That's what Maz is thinking about. You're seeing the DeAndre Swift signing the Chicago Bears. You're seeing the Kevin Byer move to Chicago Bears. You're seeing Aaron Jones go to the Vikings. And you're seeing what uh, Green Bay is doing as well. Should the Lions fans or do the Lions fans, do they have every right to be nervous based on how teams are moving? Or should we just focus on what Brown Holmes and the Lions are doing? Well, one, I, I think you need to – you always focus on what you're doing. And I think yeah. – you can look at guys that they have on this team that are getting better. And you can look at guys on this team like Malafonwu, who should have a full year now at safety. Like, you know, Kirby, who continues to get experience. Yeah. Like Aiden, who's getting better. Aleem, who was on track for a Pro Bowl type year and, you know, moving up until he got hurt. And then offensively, look, Gibbs has just come back for a second year. Amon Ra looks like he's getting better all the time. Laporte is coming back for his second year. That offensive line is that offensive line, and, and it's the strength of this team. It's golf being back with these guys. Look, you're looking for improvement here, yeah. but there's no doubt. Look, I said at the end of this year, this division was a heck of a lot better than anybody thought it was going to be, and it's only getting better now. Look, the Packers have certainly helped themselves. I don't know if they got better at running back, did they? I mean, I, I, Aaron Jones is a heck of a football player. Jacob's a heck of a football yeah. player. Um, Aaron and, Jones is the best running back you know, in the league the last seven games. Yeah, I mean, sometimes these moves look great in March, but they don't look as great when you get out there in September. I mean, we've seen other teams sign free agents. And look, I, I don't want to be here throwing water on free agency because when you use it right, it works. And I'm not here to, to you know, carry the water for anybody and say you can't sign a big price player because sometimes it does work out. I would submit feels like more often than not it doesn't and yeah. you know somebody look back at some of the classes that they've had over the years and the top ranked free agents and the fact that a lot of them aren't even on those teams anymore so look i understand we all have opinions and 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 it's fun when the free agent market opens to see your team sign those guys um but at the same time vikings lost their quarterback they're going with Sam Darnold. That's that's kind of a scary proposition. Kirk Cousins was a heck of a player. Now they're going in a different direction, and that was not their choice. Uh, Chicago still got a whole lot of things they got to hash out at the quarterback position. We have no idea who's going to be taking snaps for them week one next year. Caleb Williams, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, look, Green Bay was a really good team this year, and it looks like they've made some changes. We'll see what happens there coming into next year. But – not expected to be a cakewalk for the Lions to defend that title. They're going to have to go out there and earn it. But 
you know, what I would say is I still believe there, there are going to be guys, probably several, that obviously with a draft coming, that aren't here right now that will play prominent roles for them next year. I remember when the Lions signed Oz Hakeem in free agency. Hey, I was so happy. Bill, Bill Schrader. <laughs> Don't forget Bill Schrader. Bill Schrader. I was so happy, and it didn't get us anywhere. Um, <laughs> Dan, when you look at um, when you look at uh, positions, you know, uh, thin at wide receiver, probably maybe another offensive lineman. Um, do you think that comes by way of draft, or is there somebody out there in the free agent market that that maybe uh, you, you go that route? Yeah, Ryan, that's a great question. And I think there are still guys out there now that would make sense at wide receiver. We still don't know what's going on with Josh Reynolds. He could be back here. They know him. They like him. Um, and look, the, the championship game aside, Josh did some really good things for this football team last year. Um, but there's other guys out there that if their market meets what the Lions think the price is, that would make sense. Uh, there's a couple guards that are still out there as well, guys that have started in this league. I think they're monitoring all that stuff, and I think you could see a, a veteran guard still be signed to this team, and then they could certainly draft one as well. I think with what they've done, uh, depending upon what they can add, if they add a DJ Reader or something like that, I think that puts pretty much everything in play at 29. I mean, this is a, a draft full of receivers. This is a draft that has good interior offensive linemen. Um, so the, the answer to your question is, I don't know. I think there's possibilities that you could still see a receiver, an interior offensive lineman, uh, an interior defensive lineman signed among the veterans that are still out there now. But, yeah, I, I, I think based on what Brad Holmes has done, it's also fair to say that you could see some impact rookies coming in that are going to play a role for this team from this draft, and it could be at any one of those positions again. Dan, we assume Amon Ra is going to get done pretty soon on a contract extension. Any word on when we can expect something for Jared Goff? I, I, look, I don't know how to differentiate those two. I assume they're both going to be done here at some point soon. Um, you have to imagine that they've been talking, and I, I don't know if the current market that's being decided impacts where they are in those talks. But uh, I, I have every reason to believe those two will be signed a, at some time in the near future. Aleem, I think, will get his um, contract extension at some time in the near future. But uh, I, I've heard nothing that makes me believe that there's anything that is uh, currently holding those talks up. It's just the process as the process goes. And it wouldn't shock me if in the next 10 minutes we look up and we see that they've signed a contract extension with those guys. I fully believe that's happening. I fully believe those guys are going to be here for the long haul. I think it's just a matter of, of getting through to the point where everybody's happy and the contract is, you know, I's dotted and T's crossed. Uh, NFL draft coming up in Detroit. How about it, huh? Pretty good stuff. Exciting, man. I mean, it's, it's, you're going to have hundreds of thousands of people coming into Detroit wearing all different colors for all different teams. Um, you know, it's, they're telling me this thing's going to stretch from, from campus marshes to Hart Plaza and, uh, it's going to be electric downtown. Hey, speaking and of different it's, colors, it's, real, real real quick. Speaking of different colors, watch it. Do we, <laughs> stop it, Braylon. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about the new uniforms? Are are are, are we getting new uniforms? Uh, like, uh, do they unveil them on the stage at the draft, or is that a drawn out thing? What do we know about the new? I, you uniforms? know, I, we are. There will be, my understanding, yeah. at some point, some new uniform. I have no idea how that announcement is coming down. If that would be something they'd want to do draft week, if that is something they'd want to do some other time because there's so much going on during draft week. But my understanding is there will be a new look. There will be a new tweak. I can't speak to, you know, how you significant seen it? it is or what's going to change. I've not. I have not. I'm not if in on need, those meetings. If they need me to model. I the, bang on uh, doors, but right. they don't let me in. <laughs> Hey, they Dan, I just... I, I, dude, you know me. I'm colorblind, man. I'm probably like the worst that's person true. in the world for yeah, uniform. Yeah, that is true. That's tough. Uh, Dan, just wanted to say, man, I want to let everybody out there know on Fox 2, look, I will be on stage day two picking, but it will be for the New York Jets. No so, kidding. So don't get mad at me. I'm nice. not a traitor. I'm picking for the Jets. Yeah. Get day out two, of here. Second round pick. Hey, you but earned I, that, man. I, you I appreciate wore, that. You wore Thank that you. green and white. Hey, man. That's cool. I, I appreciate that. So it's going to be a lot of fun, Let's man. Go, I, hey, I, just... 
don't take anybody we want here. <laughs> exactly. Now I got to make sure I got to talk to Brad Holmes. Say, hey, look, man, who yeah, do you, you want? Yeah, you get that so card sure. and check yeah. that name. You might just have to make an edit. I make it. I make it audible. I call it audible. I'm hoping you can pronounce the guy's name. <laughs> Jets yeah. haven't been back to the playoffs since Braylon left. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> That's man. a fact. A lot of, <laughs> lot, lot of dumb moves by him. That's a fact. He got this one right. Right. Um, we'll spare you the hey, top look, we're fighting the Bobby Lane today. curse. The, the Jets. <laughs> we got the Bobby Lane you curse. They got the Braylon curse. Nice. Man, there it is, right? Um, so uh, Dan, we'll spare you the Tom Mazaway question. Yeah, I'm, 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 not, I'm mute right now. <laughs> I'm mute. I'm not going to argue with you. We already fought with him, Dan. We, you know, I'm not going to argue with you. Dan, we already fought with him today. Matt, yeah, Maz doesn't know what to do if a guy doesn't have to clear waivers. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with you. Janiel Hunter, yeah, how can he fit here? 24 million. Yeah, I got to know him since he was born. He said, bring him here. Yeah, he, he won't work. He won't work alongside Will Anderson. Will Anderson and Janiel Hunter? Oh, God. You guys Come on. Up with this all the time. Every day. Dude, for the first 20 minutes today, he's been on one. I, listen, I, I said, Janiel Hunter is probably my favorite player of the players that have made my life miserable. So, you know what? I was like, good, see ya, later, gone. Then I realized we got to go to Houston next year. So, I'm just see him again. so it's like, He's back. I can't get rid of the guy. Oh, He's my back. God. Dan, thanks, buddy. As always. Yeah, Dan. Appreciate you, it. All right, boys, appreciate you. All right, thanks, we'll see you. Dan Miller, check him out. Fox News at 5, 6, 10, and 11. And, of course, on the Fox I just Local app. held my breath the whole that. time. Well, I mean... <laughs> Like, I'm, gonna, I'm tired of arguing. Well, I, I'm just tired. Well, you're, you're arguing about something that, again, we won't be right and you won't be right. Right. Right? Exactly. So it's like you just... We'll uh, never know. Well, we will know. No, you won't because you don't know how we would have been here. Well, if, if the Lions win the Super Bowl next year, you won't care no, that I they won't. didn't sign Daniel I won't Hunter. give a so damn. What I'm trying to tell you is... Until next offseason. What, what no, try- they could blow the team up. But again... That. We, and we don't want that to happen. I'm just saying. But what I'm saying is if the Lions win the Super Bowl next year, and I do expect them to win the Super Bowl next year, by the way. This year. This year. Yeah. Um, I, I think all of your this fuss yeah. is okay. for naught. Well, get me there then. What I'm trying to tell you, Mez, and I'll, I'll just repeat it. I think your frustration is a next year frustration. Not a this year frustration. No, it's not, Ryan. Because I don't care about next year. They have improved each and every yes, year. That's nice. That Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell I'm have happy been for here. That. That's great. If they improve next yes. year and get to the Super Bowl and heaven forbid win the Super Bowl, yes, then I'm happy. Okay. okay. So all this was. But I don't nothing. care about next year. Okay. I don't give a damn about 2025 season. I'm. I want to win the game in February of 2025. That counts for this year. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I don't. I don't know There's why. Nowhere to go. Just don't know how to do it. Who's next? Who um, else? Gosh, we'll take a break. <laughs> but first, a message from Swiss. Fifty K. Swiss is, and fifty K. Just throw it to Pete every time. Hey, just throw it to Swiss and fifty K bracket. P- P- oh, Pete has put himself. Oh, no, never mind. Oh. You just get too much information in my text. Too All much, right. Well, you know what's going on in the meantime. It is the 50K Challenge. That's right. The Bracket Challenge here at Woolworth Sports, sponsored by Sorokis and Glorious. $50,000. Scan the QR code. After you're this, at bring it right to now. me. After this, bring it to Ryan. But right now, we're talking about this 50K Challenge. I want to win 50000 but we're not eligible. But you guys are. Scan the, uh, scan the QR code right now. 50K Challenge. Woolworth Sports, Sorokis and Glorious. Now, swinging over to Ryan. Can I get a ruling? Money. Just look, give me a ruling here. Pete says, you know, and mind you, I'm not trying to look at my phone. Oh, I'm, I'm not, sure he gave you wrong information. I'm not trying I'm sure to look he did. at my phone and text and read. Yeah, go so ahead. Pete says, and he tells me which breaks are coming. Today. Yeah. He says, Swiss in 50K bracket. So Swiss is first. And then he says, please do the bracket first. Oh. Why not just say bracket, bracket Swiss. and Swiss? I know. Pete? <laughs> <laughs> He just likes to be a part of it. The like, bad we, news we is your mic is on. Am I wrong? Hey, Ryan, no. you, you haven't noticed he doesn't. We have to throw it to him. Less, less is more. 
<laughs> the good news is, or the bad news is that oh. insurance rates are going up across the board in Michigan. The good news is that Swiss Insurance is here to help. Right now, more than ever, it's critical for you to have your insurance oh. reviewed. Swiss will make sure your carrier does not slip in extra fees or raise deductibles. Oh. Call Mark at Swiss Insurance today or visit SwissINS.com. I'm sure they have an anti maz plan. <laughs> and tell them that Woodward Sports sent you. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Stop searching for a vehicle and start finding one. Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac makes it easy. We harness the power of multiple dealerships and own the biggest selection of GM brands in the area to get you the car you need. With the Les Stanford Group, you'll have access to four different dealerships, providing you with more makes, more models, and more choices. We're connected to more than 1,000 vehicles. And with so many high-quality CPO vehicles available, you'll find new car quality at pre-owned prices. You can start and end your search at lessstanford.com today. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. Hey, gang, let me tell you about Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac Buick GMC. That's right. What happens when you run a great business for over 50 years? You expand and offer more products to more people. That's exactly what Les Stanford did by adding Les Stanford Buick GMC. They offer the same great service that customers have come to know and trust. Located in Ferndale on Woodward Avenue, just south of Nine Mile. And if you're in Dearborn, well, check out Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac. That's right. They have been in Dearborn on Michigan Avenue for over 55 Five years. You can find the brand you want. All GM brands under one umbrella. GMC, Buick, Cadillac, and Chevrolet. LesStanford.com. LesStanford.com. Together, let's drive. Are you guys? Are you guys done now? You guys? You guys fighting? No, I'm not fighting anymore. I'm yeah. not fighting anybody. Is, 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 it, is it done? I don't with? fight. You guys didn't miss each other. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I can. I can tell. I can tell. Very good. Uh, all right, uh, continuing on. Hey, before we get to the NFL, can we say congratulations to the Oakland University Golden Grizzlies? Oh, yeah. Um, for the first time since 2011, they are going to the NCAA tournament. This is awesome for OU. This is awesome for a great champion, a man who definitely deserves it. Took a team uh, from Division Two to Division One, and now four NCAA tournaments. Uh, appearances yeah. later, uh, man, and, and they feel like a scary team. They could win a game. They could win a game. I would love to see them win a game. We see these mid majors because of how long they play together. Yep. They go up against these uh, teams, yeah. these big name teams with the j names on the front of their jersey. Look what my St. Peter's team did the, the, two the, years ago. Exactly, uh, the, Jay Knight. Man, got if they could win a but, game. They could win a second game. Is yeah, what I'm saying. They if can. you could just win one game. You could win a second. Basketball's game. different, man. And I'm happy oh, for Neil. Great. And I'm happy for Neil Rule too. Uh, I'm happy for Neil Rule, who uh, really uh, is a great broadcaster. For he Oakland is. University. I'm happy for and, him very um, much. Absolutely. The happy real for deal. Him as well. A lot of respect to Neil Rule and happy for the Oakland Grizzlies. 
You see what you just said? Did you hear yourself? I know. Basketball is different. And I've football. been trying to get, get you it. to say that for three years, but I no. Get it. You give a team in there, they get a chance, bro. You don't know who they're gonna be. You just admitted it. Thank you, man. Yes. Basketball is way different yes. than football. No doubt. Yes, I'm right. St. Uh, Peter's made it to the freaking Elite Eight. Shoot. I thought they got further than that. No, they knocked off the they lost in the next oh, round. That's right, right, right. To, know, to North Carolina. True. I, I was talking to a buddy about the NCAA tournament yesterday. And, and look, we've got conference championships and conference tournaments on in studio with us. I was watching, uh, what was I watching earlier? Florida State. You're watching Florida ACC, State, 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 Virginia whatever. Tech. But yeah, Lots I mean, tech. it's on ESPN, whatever you look up, it's on. Chad, did you um, Big Ten tourney is tonight. Big, who? The Big <laughs> Ten tournament. <laughs> what? Michigan is playing Penn State. They are? Penn State is six and a half point favorites because everyone makes it. I, man, it was a joke. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. You can give six and a half to the cows come home tonight. It is the best bet of the year. Take Penn State, lay six and a half. They'll beat Michigan by 20 tonight. There's no doubt Michigan quit. They're Michigan, done. Michigan yeah. has quit. They don't want to They're play done. anymore. Um, but I was talking to a buddy about like the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. And I was like, does anybody care anymore? I do. Do you? Okay. I love the okay. NCAA tournament. I love it. Okay. So you. It is okay. the most. I mean, in Vegas, Vegas is more. Well, I'm not talking about the this. betters. I'm not talking about the betters. Okay. I'm not talking about the betters. I'm just saying Vegas has never been more crowded than when the when the uh, NCAA tournament is going on. Are we watching? It's, it's just, so as, fun as a non better anymore. Like I used to love the tournament. I love tournament time. I love filling yeah, my bracket. I, I love just watching each game. I love watching the highlights. I love staying up till late and seeing who's going to get put out. Who's going to be upset in the first round? Who's going to be that team, that Cinderella team that gets all the way or gets to the the final four or even the lead eight like uh, St. Peter's? I used to love that. Like now. Yeah. Even that, I mean, it, the, the tournament's still the tournament. You still yeah. see everything you used to, except the Blue Bloods. All that was fun in the first two, three, four rounds. But when you got down to the final four, you knew you were seeing North Carolina. You knew you were going to see Kansas. You knew you would see Michigan State. You knew you would see insert, you know, one of the teams that would switch it up. It's just not like that anymore. Last year's final four had San Diego State in it, the eventual winning UConn Huskies. And I forgot the other two teams already. Yeah, I don't know. You kind of probably no, win it again Florida, this was it year, Florida right? Atlantic? I don't know. I, th- I, th- I have no idea. I think it was Florida Atlantic. I have no idea. UConn will win it again this year, maybe. They, they can. But really, I've, I've barely watched a quarter of basketball. And mm-hmm. I mean, I know it by halves. And I barely watched a quarter of college basketball this year. So I really don't know a lot that's going on. Who's really hot? Who's not? I do believe the number one seed here in the Midwest Regional will probably be Purdue, and we have it here March 29th. He we, just won again Player of the Year for yep, uh, Purdue. That, uh, that, last that's year, where man, he's going to hang. Miami, Florida. There you go. UConn, you, Florida Atlantic, San Diego is. State. I got three of them. Yeah, you did. So I missed Miami. Miami, Florida. I missed if Miami. A five seed. If they if were it, in the final, too. A five seed versus a four seed, yeah. a nine seed versus yep. a five seed. Wait, and who was it again? Miami was a five. Oh, yeah. UConn, Jim four. Right. Florida Atlantic 9 and then San Diego State 5. No 1, no 2, no 3. If it wasn't for Oakland University, I would have zero interest in How about in the MSU NCAA. and Izzo? Zero I don't know if they're going to get in. They probably will. They're, 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 they're not they're, very good. They're, they're a terrible yeah. team. They're not very good. And I love Tom Izzo. Yeah, but I do too. It's it's over. I'd like to see Oakland play them and knock them out to yeah. tell you the truth. Ooh, I mean, they're just, they're just good enough to make the tournament. I mean, they're not Michigan. No. Obviously, no nobody's, one's that bad. Nobody's that bad. Most losses since 1967. When's the contract extension? Probably tomorrow. <laughs> Ward right. Manuel's I mean, on his game. Again, I love Tom Izzo, but it feels like he just doesn't adapt. Wow. Like there's no. It's like his. It's like he's gonna jam that round peg in the square hole enough times. I've, I've, his staff is so old. You know, like you talk about Jim Harbaugh, right? Jim Harbaugh was one way. He adapted, and it wasn't working. And then he adapted, and he hired a bunch of kids. Yeah, he hired Mike Hart. He hired Ron Bellamy. He hired Sharon Moore. He hired Mike McDonald. You know, he hired all these young guys. You see, Sharon Moore's hired today. Yeah, 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 Ohio State running back coach. And they've had really good running backs since 2015. So this is a darn darn good hire. Mm. But I think with Tom Izzo, uh, Ryan. I think he missed his mark. You know why? Because that COVID year, Michigan State arguably had the best team in the country. They were going to do some damage in that yep. bracket. 
COVID happens, they can't. So here's a guy that's already 60 plus, and everybody's telling him, you got to adapt, you got to change. Tom, your way's not working. Your way's... And here he is, and listening to all that, <laughs> still gets a team that yeah. was the best team in the tournament, and everybody uh, knew that they were going to at least be in the game and have to win it, and then it doesn't work. That was only three years ago. Three, and, four years ago. So now he's not going to be able to adapt after that. And mind you, I don't want to pretend or lie to the audience that I'm some expert in right. Michigan State athletics yeah. or, or Michigan State basketball. But I don't have to be. No, you don't. This is the same story every year. You're a top five team preseason. This is the year. This is Izzo's best yeah. team. This is the year. I've heard this for 10 years in a row. Yeah. And then what do they do? They lose a couple of games early. Tom Izzo says, oh, this isn't my team. I got. I can't work with this team. And then the, I don't know what it's going to take. Maybe I need to go back and put football pads on them uh, in practice. And then they go back and they win a game, and he says he likes the team. And then they lose a couple of more games. And then they're holding on to, I to the – I, this is what this team. You know what I, I haven't have seen. To watch this year. This, this is like a, this yeah. is like General Hospital. You know what I haven't seen. Tom this Izzo year? In, in Tom Izzo in Michigan State is like General Hospital. I was sick five five days laying in bed. I turned on General Hospital first for the time first time in fifteen years. For, first, I swear to God, was it? first time in fifteen. You know who I saw? Mickey, Lori, <laughs> or Laura. I saw Laura. Laura. Laura, Luke and Laura. Luke and Laura. I saw Laura. Uh, Sonny Corinthos, Jason Morgan is back. Anna Devane is on the show. Um, so the same cast. Spinelli is there. Um, if it ain't broke. And I'm watching it, and I'm like, I, I could pick this up. Elizabeth is on the show still. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, uh, fi- I swear to God, no, 15 to years. I, I was, 15 years I haven't watched. I was out at the Scene with Sonny Corinthos. Tom this Izzo. is this is General Tom Izzo, Hospital. and I, Tom, I love Tom Izzo. Me too. But this is the same script each and every year. Best team they've ever had. Top five team <laughs> playing a tough schedule. Early growing pains. Go through the Big Ten. Make the tournament. Lose in the first round. Come on, hey, man. At least they still got two thousand to hang their hat on. Absolutely. I was there too. Very what I was good. gonna say is you know how you always see January, February, March, Izzo. Right. I haven't seen what one does that of those even yet. Mean? I have not seen because he owns April. <laughs> right, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just haven't seen that yet. So I the, love that because he really does not own April. I, I, I understand that, but he they, won once. they love putting that out there. One more thing on college hoops, right. because I've had this story for about a week. Okay. Pete, put up the uh, new possible new NCAA bracket. It won't be an NCAA bracket, but is, is that what it is? Yeah, read that for me, Ryan, if you uh, can. A first-of-its-kind tournament featuring NIL deals as payouts coming to college basketball next season. The eight-team invitational is in Vegas, and it will guarantee $1 million to be split among the players on each team with another million to the winning team. Dan Ravel went on there and said, this will be the end of NCAA basketball. Yes, yeah, you'll just go to Vegas and play in these Correct. tournaments. Correct. That's all you'll do. Yep. I in mean, eight years' time, he thinks yep. that's going to happen. You can, I think it's sooner than that. Well, I mean, if you just look at what overtime elite is yep. right yeah. now, right? I mean, you you are essentially, um, and I don't even know what league you would call like overtime elite is a team within yeah. a. No, wait. Overtime elite is a team within a four team league in 100%. Florida or something like that. I think. Another uh, one was the G League. Right? Yeah, so that's that's what this is. It's a that, holdout because basically you have to sit out a year. So it's and that's the big thing. It's not you have to go to college for a year. You just have to sit out a year right. before you go to the NBA. He was so, saying they're not going to class anyway. They're playing basketball for money they are. anyway. Why not just mm-hmm. do this? And by the way, um, Steve O'Baby, hey, Ryan, how far did Michigan get into the NCAA tournament? You could throw in Levy any Michigan basketball yeah. insult at me you want. I, I – it won't bother it you. It does not bother but me. But I will say this. Who's playing the championship more like, recently? They I, were they were carrying the school for about five years. N- uh, the Michigan basketball. More than, more than that. that. More than that. Yeah. So Jawan Howard, I tweeted this out. He took the team over. A team I was on fire. And now it is just kindling wood. It is burned down to the ground. And we talked about it yesterday. Maze Rage is gone. Yeah. Uh, no not one even shows a maze up. Rage. There's nothing. There's nothing left. I don't understand how there's nothing left. The, I think Michigan basketball is in a worse spot today than they were. Fab Five. Chris Weber burned down the house. 
I do. And they were as high as you can then. And they were they were very relevant yeah. in the early right, what 90s. What do you think about that? My Michigan basketball in yeah. terms of the Fab Five. Tell me after they left. Like, yeah. like I was in school when I was in Michigan. When I was at Michigan, Brian Ell Ellerby was the coach. Ellerby, you mean? Brian, Ellerby. Brian Ellerby was the coach, and um, they were better then because you still. Well, had... my freshman year, we had Travis Conlon. It took them to the NIT. Maceo Baston. No, they went to the second round of the NCAA tournament. But they won the NIT year. year prior to that. I think well, that, I'm talking about when I was in school. I'm sorry. When you me. were in school, they were much better than they are now. That 97, 98, 99 team, you still had yeah. Gerard Warren was on that team. He was always hurt. Maceo Bass was on the team. Yeah. You had Mo Taylor with Tractor Trailer, yep. kind of like the remnants yep. of that 96, 95. They were like the next uh, Fab, Fab Five, five yep. if you will. Yeah, you know, so Lou Bullock. Nobody yeah, shot free Lou. throws like Lou Bullock. Man, mm. Sweet Lou was nice. He played overseas for a long yep. time. Uh, had a good career. They were good. Like this now, no one's going to games. We showed senior day. Ryan, it, it, it's it's 200 it's people, and they're all parents, and they're all on staff at the University of Michigan. It's just gotten worse and worse and worse. It hasn't looked this bad, I don't think, ever. Hence the 23 losses that they suffered this year. And I don't think, because I've seen a couple of Michigan fans online and people throughout, or anybody that is backing Juwan Howard, well, you gave Jim Harbaugh the opportunity to fix uh, Michigan's football program. It is a completely different situation. Jim Harbaugh had a track record of success at each and every program he was ever at, in college and in the NFL. He won 10 games first year. Exactly. Juwan Howard has never had that track record. This is his first head coaching job. He has never had that track record. There is no indication that he can get out of this. None. No history yeah. of it whatsoever. He's a broken man. We talked about it the yesterday. Yeah. Hasn't been the same since he... Since he fought that coach yeah, at Wisconsin. Wisconsin. And it's gone downhill. Now the strength and conditioning coach is gone. John Sanderson. There's all kinds of stuff about that. Who knows who did what. It don't matter. He's he's a second or third time offender. He, he's cooked. Who'd, he's you say, who'd you say Michigan was playing tonight? Penn State. 100% lock. Yep. Lock of the year. Yeah. What's the number? Six and a half. Lock. Drew Lock. <laughs> you mean give the six and a half? Penn yeah. State by more than six and a half. Yeah. How about you can that? even do an alternate uh, you point do total alternate on that one. Spread. What alternate And spread? I do feel bad for the Plus players. 18. I don't enjoy talking badly about Michigan basketball because of the players. I don't think the players deserve this stuff. Of course not. Um, so I, I don't take great pleasure in that at all. But I do. I, I, I'm just not a Ward Manual guy. Every single thing he has done has made the sports programs at Michigan worse. I, I just listen. They're hands all, down, all across the board, across the board, Ward Manuel has made Michigan athletics worse, across the board, and I no, he does not get credit for Michigan football. Of course not. And we'll see what happens from this point forward. And yes, they'll be worse than fifteen and zero next year. And I know that's, you know, that's. It is what it is, right? We don't anticipate they're going to go 15 and 0 every year. Yeah. Anyway, so there's only one way to go. Uh, they lost 18 players off that team. Yeah. 18 pro players. Yeah. So we'll see. But so, you know, football will be judged in time. But aside from football, he's made every other program worse. So I, I just have no faith that they're going to get it right. Michigan, Michigan hockey's going to do good. They're Michigan worse. State they is uh, the Big you know, Ten champs. Yeah. Is it home? Michigan hockey and Michigan State hockey. They're, they're both excellent programs. Yeah, Michigan's great every year. Mm. MSU eight. won the Big Ten this year. I, I, good, good for them. Michigan's been winning the last five years. I went to Yost. Ward's made them worse, too. Every year. <laughs> uh, true. He lost that. It's true. Uh, all right, guys. I got to take a break. One more break. We'll go over to Pete for, for this message, and then we'll come back. Black and yellow sign out in front of your home. It tells the bad guys and Maz one thing. Hey, yeah. That's right. It's a new year. Let Guardian Alarm offer you customized solutions from real experts, 24-7 professional monitoring, and technology backed by people. Your safety and security deserves technology that's been proven to work and by people who are proven to care. Call 1-800. Stay out. That's 1-800. Stay, Stay out. out. Call them today and tell them Woodward Sports sent you, hey, Maz. Yeah. I'm hungry. All right, let's go to Big Boy. Seafood Fest is back at Big Boy. Catch it while you can. Dive into the fish and chips, the new Parmesan crusted cod, the perfectly fried clam strip platter, and the fish sandwich as well. Big Boy must try. It's their brand new mango iced tea. It goes great. It's a great compliment with the popcorn shrimp, the shrimp alfredo, 
and the shrimp stir fry. Every day is a fish fry at Big Boy, and don't forget, every Friday night, it's the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet at your local Big Boy. Every year, after a cold and dreary winter, Metro Detroiters come together for two things. Tigers baseball and the best damned party in the world. A new season of Tigers baseball is here. And we're bringing in the new season as only Woodward Sports knows how. Broadcasting live from the biggest party. It's the Grand Slam Festival at the Detroit Opera House. Come party with 4,000 Detroit sports fans. Starting with Wake Up Woodward and rolling into Big D Energy. This is a party you don't want to miss with Detroit's best DJs, food trucks, and of course, shots. Get your tickets now at GrandSlamFest.com. 21 plus. See you April 5th at the Grand Slam Fest. Where's the most convenient place to get that big fitness energy? It's Planet Fitness. Join today for just $1 down, $10 a month. With over 2,400 locations and equipment for every workout, you can get in, get energized, and get going. And with free fitness training and most clubs open 24 hours, everyone belongs in the judgment-free zone. So join today for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment, cancel any time. You, you smell that? That's Brad Holmes cooking. And the off-season smells good. Woodward Sports. Big Boy Seafood Fest is sailing in with a fresh catch of favorites. Dive into fish and chips, our new palm crusted cod, perfectly fried clam shrimp platter, or a delicious fish sandwich. Try our new mango ice tea, the ultimate complement to our popcorn shrimp, our all new fried pickles, shrimp alfredo, or shrimp stir fry. Experience all the sea has to offer every Friday night with our all you can eat seafood buffet. Every day is a fish fry, only at Big Boy. A ton of fun, a ton of sports, and a ton of man meat. Welcome to the Woodward Heavyweights, live daily 5 to 7 p.m. on Woodward Sports. <laughs> Walk into any Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men for an award-winning haircut experience from one of our talented stylists. Enjoy a precision haircut, hot lather neck shave, scalp and neck massage, and a hot towel treatment to top it off. Enter for your chance to win the $50,000 Perfect Bracket Challenge. With more than 25 Metro Detroit locations, there's always a Lady Jane's near you. Lady Jane's Haircut for Men open seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's, it's wicked awesome. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Corner, jumper, <laughs> Tweet us. Hop on the YouTube chat. Slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Hey, guys, it is Jack Labrador time. You know, you're teaching your kids rock, paper, scissors. Well, they got to grow up the proper way to play rock, paper, scissors. It's with Jack Labrador. Check them out at jacklabrador.gg. Click on that QR code. It'll tell you how to play it. Jack Labrador gives you two new symbols and a franchise-changing three-point play. Not only that, they've got three extra games in this included in this Champions deck for $20 only. It's got 110 cards, a player token, eight and above can play this game, two players or more, and you can play it in less than 15 minutes. You can even stretch it out even more. JackLabrador.gg, tell them, Woodward Sports sent you. Hey guys, welcome back, Woodward Sports Network. Uh, Ron Armani, Tom Masway here, Braylon uh, along in just a second. Um, did you see the latest news regarding Debo Samuel? I did, he's got a new number, look at this. That's how they do it. Debo well, Samuel changing his number. Got a new new number, sure, potentially, but the Baltimore Ravens are inquiring about acquiring no, no, that Debo happening. Samuel. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. They can inquire all they want. Yeah. San Francisco's not trading him. Yeah. But he went from number 19 to number one now, which is a better number for him. I could easily yeah. follow him now on the field. Right. 19 got lost to me. It's going to be easy to follow number one now. Yeah, no doubt. He looks like the fastest guy on the field. He is the fastest guy on the field. But the Ravens looking at him, uh, I, I, I pay that no mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, clearly you see what San Francisco does with him on the field and what San Francisco does with him off the field. Yes. So, it's night uh, and day. It is night and day. And I think, um, yeah, you can look all you want. Baltimore, right. you know, why would they even, Why would they think of trading him? Well, I mean, if you look at Baltimore, I mean, my goodness. With Derrick Henry now, you're going to add a player in, in – um, in the draft, I would assume a wide receiver too to pair with Zay Flowers. Yeah, that's a dangerous offense. It dangerous is dangerous offense. It is. Uh, all right, man. Talk to me about Aaron Rodgers. I don't understand. I always come to his defense. 
But now you, you, you see this thing. He's going to be running with, as a running mate with Robert Kennedy Jr. for president. He's going to be the vice presidential candidate. Him or Jesse the Body Ventura? Jesse the Mind Ventura. Sorry, Jesse the Mind <laughs> Ventura. That would be a better choice. At least that guy's had some political uh, experience. Governor of Minnesota. I mean, but now the Jets are pissed at him, uh, Bray. The so, Jets are like, what the hell are you doing? A couple of things about this, if I can. I have, I have taken Robert Kennedy's candidacy, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s candidacy, more seriously than others. Yeah. Um, this is a complete. Um, uh, That's a reach. It's, well, a, it's not even a reach. This makes you an unserious yeah, person. It looks silly. Yeah, I think. Um, and and again, this is coming from a guy. I have taken Robert Kennedy Jr.'s uh, candidacy very seriously because I think if he gets on the ballot in a lot of these different places, it will determine who the next president is going to be. Um, who does he hurt? Oh, he hurts Biden big time. You yeah. think? He's a Kennedy. He's a Democrat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, the lowest of the blue blood yeah. Democrat. I mean, he's a Kennedy Democrat. Yeah. Did you hear uh, that they want to switch out uh, their vice president now and bring in Nikki Haley as a possibility? It's never going to happen in a million years. You don't years. think so? No, because you cannot. No, you, you, you cannot. No. Okay. You, you, you cannot But do continue that. what you were saying. I didn't um, mean to cut you off. This, this makes... An, this, this makes Robert Kennedy, an unserious candidate to me. I still think people will vote for him. And again, this is a New York Times report. We have not heard from Robert Kennedy, nor have we heard from Aaron Rodgers about this at all. Pat McAfee says that Aaron Rodgers is in Costa Rica somewhere right now and doesn't even know about this. Yeah, sure. So, um, <laughs> yeah, he don't know about it. Well, I'm just saying what right. what McAfee is saying. You know what I mean? But the Jets are pissed yeah. because you cannot play on Sundays and campaign six days of the week and think you're going to get ready for the Giants or, or the Jags it's, or whoever. You, yeah, I got the Bills on Sunday, but let me go take four state stops over here. You know what I mean? We yeah. just played some video from him last week, bro. Right. You remember? Yeah. He's like, listen, man, right. last year yeah. was a disaster for me. I really thought we could have won. I'm coming back this year. I could play two to four more years. The Jets have a lot of talent, and we've talked about it. Don't turn your back on the Jets if Aaron Rodgers is ready to go. But this is bull. All right, this is what I say about this. First and foremost, like Ryan said, we got to find the validity on it. Like, you got to find out what's going on. You got to wait for Aaron Rodgers to make a statement. With that said, if the Jets are pissed, there's some validity to it. If the That's Jets right. come out and say they're pissed, then there's some validity to it because they're not going to let the world know if they're pissed unless they know for a fact that there's something going on with Rodgers and Kennedy. This is the way I look at it. I support Aaron Rodgers. Like, he, he made me a believer last year. I went to training camp, told you what I talked to about my fellow classmate, the 05 draft. I said, you know what? He's changing. He's turned the corner because you guys knew I felt about him before that. But what did I say when he was a, a candidate to go to the Jets? What did I say? I wouldn't do it told you guys that. I said, I'm not bringing in Aaron Rodgers. What has he done to the Green Bay Packers organization? What has he been? A, a, a loose mind. He's been yeah. off to himself. He keeps to himself. He changes things. He's a sporadic mind. You never know what you're going to get out of him. You're talking about paying this guy $100 million for the span of two years or one fifty at this age and what you know what he is? And lo and behold, here comes something. After you tear your Achilles last year, and let's just say it's true, because this is operating from a space we don't know, but let's say it's true. You tear your Achilles last year. Now they're waiting for you to come back. You're supposed to be putting all your eggs and energy into coming back for the New York Jets to be focused, to be ready, to be on that field. And now this is the direction in which you choose to go. It's one of the reasons why I said I wouldn't bring in Aaron Rodgers because you already know how he's conditioned. He's conditioned to take care of whom? Aaron His Rodgers. Self. He's been that guy. So if it's true, it's your fault. Once again, Jets, you did another dumb thing. Yep. And again, full disclosure, he has not commented and Robert no. Kennedy has not commented. This is a New York Times report, and we all know about the failing New York Times. So <laughs> just putting that 100%. out there. Um, guys, Maz, you gave me a lock uh, earlier in the show. I did. I'm going to give you another lock. All right. You ready? I told you Penn State over Michigan. Okay. You Go told ahead. me, I'm going to give you another lock. The Detroit Pistons are going to win tonight. And they're going to win three games out of four for the first time all season. They're playing the Raptors. They have won back-to-back -back games this season. They have done it twice. This would be the third time this 
entire year that they have won back-to-back games. But they have not at any point over the course of the entire season won three games out of four played. They will win tonight and win three of four. Now, you know the, the, the crowd will be from Toronto. Sure. <laughs> they always take over. Especially oh, man, now. They do it with the Blue Jays. Yep. They, they do take it with, over. Do it with the Maple Leafs. Like they always they are one city that takes over our teams. Our, they are the Raptors. They do yep. it with the Raptors, the Maple Leafs, do it with every all four majors. And What's then the you number? Got the, What's the number four, on uh, so. Hold on, let me see. Uh, b- uh, it's gotta be the Raptors by four or five at least. Well, let me see. Hold on. Uh Pistons by three and a half. Oh my god. Not You're right. Lose. You're right. Pistons are going well, to win gonna by get the double first pick, so that, It doesn't even matter at this point. Um, and then they got this funny system this week with uh, where they play Miami at home on Friday, and then they play Miami again on home on Sunday afternoon. Oh, cool. And the Knicks, so Miami, they did that with the Bucks Miami Miami earlier this year. Yeah. stuck here for two days? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> They'll go home. <laughs> no. They'll go home on Saturday. No, they play three, seven on Friday and then three on Sunday. Oh, okay. You can't nah, stay in Birmingham be, for, they'll, for they'll one day. Here. You stay right here at the, you, the you, towns. You, you, you can gamble Jackson. a little bit Friday night. Wake up, chill yeah, in the towns, and not do much. You know they got work in town. Work is another word for. Uh-huh. Um, uh, and then the last thing I, I want to mention today: the Detroit Red Wings lost again last night. You mean Six. the Dead Wings? I said, uh, "What did I say, Maz? I said it would take barring a, a, a barring a complete an epic disaster collapse. Collapse. And there was. And we are seeing an. Epic collapse. They're not in any game. They have lost six straight. They're getting blown out. And uh, they lost to the Coyotes. I knew it was over. <laughs> they have not won since the the garbage patch. I know. Guess who they play tomorrow, Bray? The Coyotes. The Coy- they play Coyotes here. That's another loss. They are currently still. They're not. They're they're, they're, they're out. out. They're out. They're, they're two out of the last playoff no, spot. No, they're tied with the Islanders, but the Islanders are two, are two have, ahead. Yeah. Well. Two ahead, and the Islanders have a game in hand. The Islanders have a game in hand. So, well, like, they're on the outside looking in, right? They're now. on the outside looking yeah. in. For all the those season people, were over that, today. you know, this is good for for all those people that didn't like Dylan Larkin. For all those say he's overrated, he's not that good, he's this, that, and third. One player has them on a six-game slid. You better give Dylan Larkin some love. Very That's good. All I'm saying. And how about those Tigers? They win it yesterday. They're winning again today. Another great pitching performance today. Jack Flaherty. In case you missed it yesterday, a guy that Al Avila drafted, and they made fun of him for drafting him. It's Jackson Job. He had a 1 2 3 ninth inning. He's not a reliever. He might be. Who knows? But he was reaching 102 miles an hour on the gun. And two strikeouts out of three. He looks fantastic so far in the spring. He's got to make the club, right? He's not making the club. Why? He's, because he's only played a ball. They already told him before he came, but he came down. Uh, the manager AJ Hinch said, "Look, kid, you're not making the opening day roster. Just do your thing and go work on your pro- progress." That's what they're doing. They're babying him. Do you know what Jim Leland used to say? What? When I call your name, when I fill out your name in the lineup card, I don't look at your license. I don't check your I ID. I love that. You know? Love that. <laughs> Who's better than Leland? Nobody. <laughs> Going in the Hall of Fame, baby. <laughs> once yeah, I saw him go after, like, once I I'm saw that. I'm not checking your ID, okay? Yeah, once I saw that footage, like, leak of him going after Barry Bonds with the with the Pirates, I was oh, like, man. I was like, oh, he's, he's bad. He's bad at it. <laughs> he hates great. that, by the way. He hates that video? He hates that video. Most of those coaches that have those videos, the old videos circulate, they all hate him now. You hate it then. Like, they, they hate the circulation. They think differently. But it's not a now thing. You did that years ago, and. That's how you operate business. He did it ago. to the right guy. Uh, Bray, get us out of here, bud. Things you guys forgot. Tigers lost today, by the way. 15 years ago today, Bill Davidson. We can't hear you, Pete. Thank My God. There yeah. you go. Two things you guys forgot. First of all, Bill Davidson, 15 years ago, passed away today. God rest his soul. And also, happy hey, 313 hey, day. Happy 313 day. That's very right. good. I definitely forgot what, 313 what a day. manufactured holiday. What are you going to do for the 313 yeah, day holiday? Them. I mean, it's, but it's our day. People that say what it made for the... Nah, see, that's people that... That's, that's how you know you're not from Detroit. That, that's how you know you're not I from Detroit. I was born in Detroit. 313 day. I mean, hey, look, it's this 313. What up, there? You didn't even know it was. My it don't matter. It's 313. I, I forgot my birthday before. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My era. So did I. Exactly. My, <laughs> 
<laughs> My area code is 313. What were you doing? You forgot your birthday. I know I was doing forgot mine. I don't even I get nothing suitable for this. Hey, Pete, get us Long out of here, man. time ago. Oh. The big Maz on the new shot there, guys. Oh. A big giant oh, wow. Maz. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Good job. Like that marshmallow Ryan guy at uh, Ghostbusters. Braylon Edwards, some guy named Maz who we don't care about. <coughs> Myself and Mike, our new sound guy. We really appreciate you guys Ain't listening no today on Armani and Edwards with Maz here on Woodward Sports Network. We will see you guys tomorrow. Happy 313 Day, boys and girls. See you. 313. So great.